honestly, honestly, I might have to, I might have to kind of take a quick look at, uh, at the recession forecast that I had at the beginning of the year. When I wrote the article about the 2022 recession, so, and this is available for everybody. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you guys can get access to this too. But let's go to fundamentals here. So the 2022 recession. So when I put this thing together, I also have a too long, give me the short version for some of y'all. I know, I know reading is a fucking, is a dead skill nowadays, right? But fucking, all right, make, this is, this is to help you make money. It's to help you understand where to invest. So stop fucking around. All right. But that's the short version. And then there's the full picture for some of y'all that actually want to get educated. Um, definitions, obviously. So <clears throat> I said cash is trash until the markets are about to crash. This was earlier this year. Basically, if you have cash in a recession, you're going to be able to take advantage of the markets. And I think that's what we've been seeing. If you look at all the asset classes that have been dropping since the beginning of the year. So stocks. So this is the NASDAQ index, US 30, same deal. Since January 1st of this year, it's been dropping. This entire year has been bearish. Let's go to BTC. Since November of last year, bearish. Let's look at, I don't even have gold on here, but you guys get the deal. What's the only thing that's been consistently going up this entire year? The dollar. So it's been a dash for cash. People are selling off their high-risk assets, speculative long-term assets, everything in order to get cash so they can buy during the dip. And so what we're seeing now is a kind of turn of that, uh, of that momentum. You see the dollar starting to retrace back down and you see some of these other assets moving back up. Crypto's recovered almost 48% since the June lows. NASDAQ's been pumping since the June lows. So June was sort of like a, like a, a short-term relief floor that we found in all the asset markets. And people are now getting out of cash and then going back into these other assets. All right. So for the next few months, as far as we can tell, assets going up, dollar going down. I'm going to take a look at gold right now and uh, let you guys know if I see the same thing on gold. But gold is a little special. Bitcoin and stocks, they sort of move the same. And so I'm looking at stocks and Bitcoin as the same basket of high risk assets that people want to buy to get a big ass return. Bonds, little returns. Right now, the uh, housing market, little returns. Even stocks, average returns, cryptos, big market movers, and tech stocks. Tech stocks, I think, are, are really undervalued now. I want to, I want to share something with you guys. The, um, the leading indicator that I used last year, the sort of look at the, the, the bearish market in December, was that Elon, Jeff, Mark Zuckerberg, they had all sold a record amount of shares in their main company in November. So you look at what happened in November, they were sort of seeing the top of the market. In December, some of the largest hedge fund managers started to copy them and they did the same. And then the month after, Jerome Powell gets up and he's like, hey, you guys know that thing I said last week about inflation not being a big deal? I lied. Inflation's really bad. 2022, I'm going to fuck your life up. And then the markets just crashed after that. So if we're looking at the, the sort of leading indicator here of the largest stockholders in the country, of the largest companies in the country, selling off their stock every time they see a high in the market, that's an early indicator for us. Elon just sold $7 billion of Tesla last week. Uh, Jack Dorsey stepped down from Square or from Block to go you know, follow Bitcoin or to go be a developer for Bitcoin or some shit. People don't, uh, you know, Michael Saylor, He's the longest standing CEO of a, of a fucking S&P 500 company. He's been here since the 90s. The guy just left to go work on Bitcoin. People only have a mass exit out of these major companies and out of their positions whenever they see a downturn happening. And they're like, dude, there, there ain't no way out of this. I don't have the charisma. I don't have the passion to go and deal with this shit right now. This is somebody else's problem. And they see this from the top. And same with them selling their stock. They're like, well, I do want to liquidate. I do want to fund my other companies. It's better to do it at the highs than to do it at the lows. So that's my early indication. I think over the next two months, the market's going to start to turn back around. Until then, we're back bullish.
So this is uh, almost a three to one R and R trade. I'm, you know, this could be one of those days where there's no retest or the retest is like 8 a.m. right before the market opens. And then this thing just pumps up and then stalls. Just like what happened yesterday. So yeah, this could have been the retest here. I really want to see if we can get one, if we can get a retest at the market open, the 930 market open. That would be an ideal scenario for this. Should I invite should I should I invite some guests on to stream? Should I call James? Let me see what these let me see what these boys are up to. Give me one second. Jesus. No retest. Oh, GJ is one thing I didn't I didn't talk to you guys about. Guys. Come on. Crazy, crazy buy limit. Maybe even a bit lower. But I think the 160 level, the 160.3, 160 level, that's the ideal, ideal, ideal. We had this wedge up, one top, two top, three top, four top, and each low was getting lower. Massive sell off that zone. No retest. I am seeing it continue to drop to about 160.3. And then that's where we can take a swing trade position all the way up. I've been talking about swing trading GJ for like seven months now. I caught a few entries. They, they came back and hit break even. Um, I think I caught an entry here off the break, retest, double bottom. This is also 61% inverted head and shoulders. This was a sexy trade. Um, obviously, swing trades came back and hit break even. I did take partials on the way back down once we broke the structure. I took the majority of my trade off, but then the runner I had basically hit break even. I'm looking for my next entry. I need this trade. I don't need the trade, but like, I'm trying to get one of these uh, one of these FX pair swing trades and just let this thing work money in the background. So GJ got my eye on that radar. EU, I'm still looking to short at 1.04. This thing just doesn't want to get there. Where's she at? Oh oh oh. Maybe I spoke too soon. So this thing's been consolidating since. July 19th, so oh, basically a month. Yep. So daily closure, I want to see price break through this zone and then close below it on the daily. If we close below the 61 on the daily, this is our swing trade. We got a good 600 pips to the downside. It's a five to one risk and reward ratio. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty straightforward trade. If we just kind of look at this. It's just support, resistance, support, resistance, support, resistance. All right, I want to see it break through the zone, close back under. We got a pretty good entry here. EU, my confirmation for EU is the dollar. Is Has the dollar hit a floor yet? Honestly, no. This thing is dropping precipitously. If it finds a floor down here, though, and it starts to pull back up, then I can see EU start to come down because they move opposite of each other. I think the DXY moves first, though. It's a leading indicator. I have my next floor all the way down here. And so until this thing hits this floor and then rejects and starts to pull back up, EU is not going to drop. And so we could be sitting in that short position for like four or five days before this thing pops. Just letting you guys know. That's the beauty of a swing trade is money moves from the hands of 
the patient to the inpatient. Have you guys heard that? Or from the inpatient to the patient? If you can wait four, five, six, seven days for the market to start playing out, and then you can wait 14, 15 days for the trade to really play out, maybe 20 days, that's where serious, serious money gets made, at least on the FX side. Um, I've never had a lot of success scalping FX, making big money at least. Right? You, can pull, you can pull money out consistently, of course, because risk and reward, you can always make money on the smaller, you know, with smaller trades. But if you're looking to really, really make money, it's in the swings. NASDAQ, though, different story. This is my intraday baby. All right. So just a heads up, looking for price to basically come down and retest this area, try to, try to shake a bunch of people out. And then I want to buy it up. If it messes around down here first, I'll wait for it to pop back up and we can just trade the higher lows. And then let me put a price label right here. Let's put this up. All right, everybody. So if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me just go through and do like a formal intro. I feel like we just ran into this or ran right into the call. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube live stream hosted by Chart Addicts. My name is Roy Dunia. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Chart Addicts. We're the number one personal coaching platform in the world. Thursday live stream is pretty straightforward. We go through news. I, li I live trade NASDAQ. Um, we'll show you guys a few cool tips and tricks that you guys can implement in your trading. And of course, if you guys have any questions, I'll be here to answer those. So good morning. Personally, I trade the NASDAQ 100 index. I don't trade every day, but I do look at the markets every day. I try to find opportunities in the direction of the trend. I ask myself, am I in an impulse or a retracement? I look to enter at the bottom of retracements and catch the direction of the trend. Risk management is your best friend while you're trading. And uh, yeah, let's get the show on the road. So NASDAQ, higher lows. We got this thing down. Pre-market, we're starting to retrace. Market's going to get here around 930. So we got about 30 minutes left. The market's going to get down here. It's going to fuck around. So it's going to be massive retracements, wicks, whatever it takes. And then it's going to shake everybody out of the trade. As soon as it closes back above our zone, we'll take some buy entries or we can scale in. So we'll take some buy entries down here if it wicks down. And then as soon as it closes above, enter a few more and get this party started. All right. Make some money, close the trades, withdraw the profits and fuck off. Uh, go do something nice for somebody else. Deal? Deal or no deal? Let me know, people. Let me know in the chats if you guys are ready to trade. If you're still asleep, fucking go get some coffee and come back. He said, we live. He said, get James on. Yeah, uh, y'all, it's, it's fucking nine in the morning. That, that boy James is asleep. I, I'm just going to I'm just gonna say this honestly. Uh, gold making a head and shoulders on the one hour as we speak. NASDAQ is having a long-term breakout right now. Uh, the next billionaire in the making. I hope you're talking about me. Well, I appreciate that. People in the comments talking about deal, deal, deal. Chart Addicts members in the Zoom call, three people said deal. The rest of you guys are fucking asleep. I say this every day. If you guys can get on the stream and you guys can have your headphones in and you guys can listen and you guys can get out your MT4 and trade, you can fucking reply in the comments. All right, wake up. Y'all acting like this is a fucking Pilates class. If you're here to make money, wake up. It's like, oh, no, I'm just going to sit here with my dick in my hand. And just to fuck. I think I can make money. This is the only part of your day I'm going to ask you to be fucking awake at the wheel. 
turn off the autopilot for a second, get back in the fucking game, focus, and let me see some sort of fuck, man. Bro, we're up. We got this coffee going, dude. We're good. I know you are. I'm not worried about you, Nick. Trust me. You're the last person I'm worried about on this call. Yeah, I'm talking about these kids still asleep. These people are, goddamn, all these people on the call, three people said good deal. Everybody else was like, oh, I guess. I guess it could be a good deal, maybe. I got cool. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Yo. All right, YouTube is popping off. I'm seeing emojis here. Shit, I might have to, I might have to go get some coffee myself. Can you take a look at US 30? Vanessa, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you since the summit. How you been? Said you got me dead. Look, people, you can't be asleep while you're trading. There's, the, there's, there's, five, there's like everything that you can do in your day, you can basically do on autopilot. You wake up, you brush your teeth, you grab the coffee, you go to work and you get the car and you get the, and you go to the gym and you do the routine and you get the, uh, right? Everything is the same fucking routine that you normally do. And you can be on autopilot for most of it and basically get away with doing that shit in life. I'm not, I'm not recommending that. I'm just saying you can get away with that. You know, you can get away with doing that for a long fucking time. You cannot do that while you're trading. If you try to half-ass trade and you're, on your, you're out there on your couch, you're trying to like scroll for trades, like you're scrolling on Instagram. Pff, guys, this is not, look, one thing that we have to get clear is that trading is a serious game. Yeah, we post in charts on Instagram and there's the lifestyle people and there's the, the YouTube car guys and there's the fucking community over here and there's this and that. At the very end of the day, you're putting money on the line and you need to make good decisions. You're getting paid to make good decisions. Right or wrong, you are getting paid to make one to three good decisions. Where am I going to enter? Am I going to enter? How big of a position am I going to go in? When do I close and withdrawing the profits? You have decisions to make. If you're half-assing these decisions, well, oh, let me just get in here or let me just do this or I guess it's a good trade versus looking at confirmations, looking at the higher time frames, doing the work over the weekend understanding all the different mechanics that you need to actually make a trade profitable. Do you understand direction on the higher time frame? Do you understand how the smaller time frames correlate with the higher time frames? Do you understand how to find multiple confirmations at the same zone and how to build a high probability position? Do you even know the difference between a high probability trade and a low probability trade? Now you're scalping on the five minute trying to hold it for fucking three days because you think it's going to run to the moon, right? So at the end of the day, trading is probably the only 30 minutes to two hours of my day where I am required to be as locked in as possible. And if you keep in mind that you only get, I don't know who said this, I think it was Bezos, you only get five good decisions a day, right? After that, there's a diminishing return on each, of, on each good decision that you make. It's a muscle. You can't just work out all day, all day, all day, all day, all day. And so, you know, if, if some of you guys are over trading, the reason that that's hurting you is because you're making too many decisions. It's hard to make that many quality decisions. So it's a quick tip for everybody. If you want to succeed in your trading, you do have to be like, you have to be focused. You have to be up and awake the rest of your day. Good luck. All right. You can wing it for, for the majority of the, for the majority of the ride. All right, so we have about 20 minutes until the market opens. I'm looking for one more retracement back down to 13.430. 13.430. Massive pullback at the market open. All right, we might even break through this zone a little bit because from the start of that trend, the 61 is right there at 4.30. The 78 is at 4, 411. And of course, the 88.6 is at the 400. So 13, 400 flat. So I'm going to be scaling in, uh, probably not at the top yellow zone. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of that and just wait for 13, 4, 13, 410. All right, 13, 410, I'll scale. We break below it a little bit. Might enter another one. As soon as it whips back in, might enter a third. How do you? responsibly scale into positions. Everybody thinks, oh, scaling means 
enter as many as possible. Blow my account. No. You have a certain dollar amount that you're allowed to risk on your account, right? Per trade. So let's say that you're doing, you have a 50K funded account through one of these prop, through one of these prop firms. And you're risking 1%. 1% is $500. You can split up that $500 into four positions at $125 risk per position. So instead of entering one big ass trade here where you're risking $500, you can enter one trade here where you're risking 125, one trade here where you're risking 125, and then one trade here where you're risking 250. Or you can put the, the 250 down here, the bigger position. So you're splitting up that entire $500 you would have risked into four different entries where you can get better prices. And so if the market does retrace on you, you're not holding a big ass position right here, holding all this drawdown, panicking, whatever, you close the trade, this thing runs back in your direction. Instead, you enter a light position. And then as the market retraces, you enter a heavier one. And then as the market goes back in your favor, you can close this one and hold the better entry. Scaling. All right. So if you guys don't know the risk parameters that you need to have on your account, um, that's the first thing that I would do as a trader. It's like, yeah, you're not like learning the technicals is first and foremost, you got to understand what the fuck you're doing. So learn the technicals, learn higher highs and higher lows, learn multiple confirmations. That's key. But after that, you need to understand what are you risking on your account? A lot of people, that's the, the biggest thing, especially people who haven't really mastered like the math behind lot sizes and how to really like find out how much to risk on your account. Those folks are just putting whatever lot size looks good, right? Like that is fucking gambling. That's the definition of gambling. And so the first thing that everybody should do after this call, if you like don't already have the risk parameters, Char Addicts members, you guys are good. I know that you guys already have this thing done. But for most everybody else that's listening, look at your account and figure out what is the maximum risk I can put per trade based on the size of this account. Once you find that number, your losses better not look bigger than that. Maximum daily risk, maximum weekly risk, maximum monthly risk. You've got to have those numbers or you will blow through it. It's the nature of the game. There's no rules in this market. You're going to have to create the rules. So you better make some pretty good rules here. Uh, no, I don't want the, fuck the 15 minute. People 30 minute and up. All right. I'll tell you guys a secret here. The 30 minute and higher on NASDAQ. My blood pressure has dropped fucking 50 points, right? Everything that happens on the smaller time frame, I'm convinced is, is meant to entice traders to make bad decisions. To either, you know, over risk on their account, to re-enter trades. They'll show shorter time frame patterns that'll entice you to get in a, in a trade and then whipsaw the shit out of the trade to a more attractive level. So if we stick to the higher time frames and we're looking at the impulse and retracements. We're looking at the impulse and retracements. Impulse and retracements. Then all we need is for price to come down to another key level. I don't need to see this. I mean, I might go down to the five minute or the 15 minute just to scale an entry, but I don't need to see more than, you know, more than this. This is everything I need for the entire day. If I left my chart like this and I didn't touch it, price is either going to come down to my zone or it's not. Right? So smaller time frames, a bit of a trap, especially if you're new to trading. If you're new to trading, the smaller time frames on the indices are going to give you a run for your money. So what I would do is make it simple on yourself. Make it simple on yourself and stick to the higher time frames. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. If you're watching this on YouTube, could you guys make sure to hit the like and subscribe button? Hit the like, hit the subscribe button. It takes two seconds. Matter of fact, I'm going to wait on you. Matter of fact, I'm going to wait on you guys to smash that like and subscribe button real quick. 
And then let me know what pairs you guys want me to go through before the market opens. We have 15 minutes. We got 15 minutes. And so we got 15 minutes to basically get as much work in as possible before uh, we start live trading NAS at the open. So let me know what pairs you guys want me to cover. I'll go through those in the next 15 minutes, but I am waiting on you, everybody on YouTube. Make sure you guys are smashing that like. Make sure you guys are smashing that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Come on, y'all. Let's get to this work. All right. I'm seeing the lights go up. I'm seeing the lights go up. Come on. Yes, you. We're waiting on you. Come on. Let's get to 50 and we'll go through these pairs. He said, when Roy talks, you got to just do, your, uh, do a self-analysis and just adjust yourself. Yes, sir. Roy, why people trade all black candles? Because candles, the color of the candles cause an emotional reaction. So if you guys just think about it, all this is, all the charts are, is just a bunch of numbers that are moving all day. They make the charts look attractive because they're trying to make it like a game. So all of us are attracted to the game so that we can trade more and we can be more involved and it makes things more interesting. When you take the color of the candles out of the picture, the most important thing that you start to see is just the open and the, the close of the candles, which is all that matters. Trading is all about the low and high of candles and the open and close of candles and whether they're printing higher or lower than they were before. So if you know what to look for in terms of highs and lows, that's going to be the most important thing. I'm, I, this is sort of how I studied trading for years. And so I have an instinctive sort of relationship with the color of these candles. But it, it really don't matter. On my MetaTrader, they're actually not green and red. You guys can see they are like blue and white. I like this blue and white. This is very soothing for me, right? I love being on the charts on my MT4. So do whatever makes you feel comfortable. As long as you know how to identify highs and lows, that is your priority as a trader. If we're just going to be completely real here. All right, let's go through it. U30. Where's she at? Interesting. All right. So U30 broken above all the major zones. This is a daily type deal. All right, people. So daily, we got two zones of interest up here. The biggest one obviously being this high. So if I just delete everything in the middle, let me show you guys what I'm looking at. Massive, massive, massive zone. So I got to pin my picture here. I do this. Okay. Hey, I'm in the corner here. So higher time frames, support, resistance, boom. Support, resistance, support, daily support. So massive liquidity zone here. This area was where most people were looking to short. This was the institutional area that everybody was looking to short the double top. And the market just basically blew through. No rejections, disrespected that entire zone. So I'm expecting price to continue moving to the upside. The next area where I'm looking for a bit of a retracement is 33,700. We'll get a bit of a pullback here during the session. We'll come back to retest 33,450. You guys write this shit down. Right? I'm, I'm telling you all this is, this is literally how this shit's about to go. 33,700, market's gonna play around here and reject. It'll come back to retest the 33,500 area. Let's call it 33,470, just so I can be as accurate as possible. 33,470. And then it's going to push up to the 34,000. 34,000 is where I'm looking for shorts. This is a long-term play. So in the meantime, we're going to continue bullish. That's the big picture on U30. So we had this nice consolidation zone here. So basically the market's going to shoot up to this liquidity zone at, at 700. And then hopefully we get a pullback before we go long. All right. Yeah. So I'd be looking to go long at 33,100. So basically, I just like let this thing play out and then look to go long on the higher time frames. 
If you're looking for a shorter time frame play, there probably is one. Uh, I'll come back to it after we look at uh, NASDAQ because the market's about to open. Price is coming down to our entry. I want to make sure that I'm locked in on this. I'll go ECAD for swing, UJ for the analysis. Uh, US oil reverse around 93. Yeah, we already did oil bullish. Oh, gold, 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 gold. So matter of fact, guys, we got about 10 minutes until the market open. Let me go grab some coffee and I'm gonna be right back. If you guys have any pairs that you'd like me to go through, I'll do the chart addicts group chat first, obviously. So if you're in chart addicts and you, you guys want me to go through any uh, pair specifically, just put it in the chat. I know I got gold already on the menu and I'll be back in basically like three minutes. We'll see if this coffee's, see how long this coffee takes. All right, y'all, I'll be back in a sec. And we're back. That was quick. So 
just between us, I'm trying to cut back on my caffeine intake. And so I opted to go for some tea instead, right? Some healthier habits. So if you guys are watching this, let me know what content do you guys like the most from us since I got you guys, since I, since I have you here. CA members, we're obviously we're coming out with all the new courses. We do a lot of stuff live. We trade live. The new courses are going to blow your mind. I'm going to be honest. But obviously, uh, in CA, it's the, to me, the personal coaching is the holy grail. Because it's the one thing that everybody, that, that nobody wants to offer that will actually make traders successful. Like, yeah, if I'll be, if I'll be completely honest, we, we kind of have that part down. But for those of you guys that interact with us on YouTube, social media, whatever it is, what kind of content do you guys want to see more from us? Was it the podcast? Is it the live streams? Is it, um, you know, we just dropped a new course on YouTube. It's going to be a crypto course. So it's basically a free crypto course for everybody to be able to kind of get up to date. Because this next cycle, I think, is going to be very huge for crypto. And if you guys are trying to build your wealth, you know, you have to look at the places that will give you a big return. So we did just drop a free course on YouTube. Uh, the first episode dropped yesterday. It's what is money. So that we'll teach you basically everything about the current monetary system and then how it's going to transition over to crypto, what blockchains are, what security is, wallets versus exchanges. And we'll be dropping a new episode every week. So just let me know what kind of content you guys want to see more from us. and. Uh, you know, we're going to get that thing done. He said, how much is the coaching? You get five uh, personal coaching sessions a month for $99. And you get access to these live streams. You get access to early content. You get access to the coaches and the educators. You get access to the courses. You get access to all the resources, et cetera, et cetera. He said, it's all about live trading so we can get the correct mindset, patience, what you're looking for, scaling in and out. For some, yes. Most people, they know what they're doing. They're keeping their strategy simple. They're looking at the higher time frames. They're buying at support and resistance. The only issue is they're not patient enough, not consistent enough. One week, it's this. One week, they're, out, they're in the game. One week, they're out the game. So for everybody, it's different. And that's what personal coaching is all about. It's what, do, what does this individual need in order to make that progress? Um, for some, for some people, live trading could be a distraction. Like I'll tell people I'm not going to enter this trade and it'll talk them out of their own trade. Whereas obviously they were, they were seeing something specific. So we got to be, you know, everybody needs to kind of use what's going to benefit them best. So you look at all the services, not everybody has to be on every live stream and do the coaching. The majority of the members at chart addicts don't get on the live streams at all. You guys can see how many people are on here. But you look at, okay, we did 150 consultations last month. That's a shit ton of one-on-one -on -one consultations. So you look at, okay, that's where the majority of folks are spending their, their time. Um, and so, yeah, it's different for everybody. I love the live environment. I'll be honest. I'm, you know, I, I, the reason that we started Chart Addicts is basically we're doing this for ourselves. Me and Omar might be doing this or me, Omar, and, and a few guys were like, doing this with other people is the most fun especially when we're in a position to give back some value. I love being on here and being able to at least, you know, share what we're learning, share what we're seeing and provide that value. But let me see YouTube, what you guys are talking about. This podcast with successful traders. We just dropped the podcast with Swaggy C. Swaggy C, uh, he's huge on YouTube, does a lot of education, been trading for a long time. He's been around some of the best traders. He's kind of picked up a lot of game from them. And so He's obviously had a lot of success in his life. Got to pick his brain. We have Emil Trader. He's getting on the podcast next week. Um, our expert trader podcast series is honestly like, there's a lot of gems. Abel Melendez was one of the people that I first started learning from when I uh, got into trading. He, was, he taught me the basics, support, resistance, trend lines. He's a great guy. Uh, Michaela, she's really educated on the psychology of trading. She's worked with everybody from, well, she's, she worked in Citibank as an analyst. She worked uh, in Astro FX, which was one of the early education platforms for trading. And then now she runs the uh, brokerage department for Huobi Global. It's one of the top five crypto exchanges. Alex Santi, big time trader, uh, has multi, multi, multiple businesses, Amazon stores, trucking, all this stuff. Great podcast. Everybody knows QBanks. Everyone knows QBanks and Anthony, the top tier crew. We had a really nice podcast with them. Andy Peters, Jessica Lane, 
Derek, uh, James Storms, and QB Stew. This is one of my favorite podcasts that we've ever shot ever. Uh, Charlene, love Charlene. Mamba FX, if you guys want to check out the Mamba FX interview, Lambo Raul and Alex G, the, the boys. We have a bunch of interviews. Uncle Ted, Raja, um, basically everybody that you guys can think of in the game. And we just got Swaggy C. I kind of just sealed the deal. I might be flying. Uh, no, I can't even say that out loud. <laughs> we're, we're launching a whole new series, guys, where basically it's going to be like a vlog series where I go and hang out with all these guys, hang out with the boys, and show you guys the lifestyle. I'm going to show you guys how all these different traders are living and how, because everybody is so unique. Like when I fly to Arizona and go see Anthony, very different lifestyle than the Miami guys. The Miami guys, everybody got their own lifestyle. The people who are constantly traveling, the people who are constantly working, the people who are doing deals, you know, everywhere, they got different lifestyles. Puerto Rico, <laughs> where Swaggy C is, very different lifestyle. So I want to share that with you guys. I think it's going to be really fun. Show the setup and process for the next uh, convention. It's coming. I promise you guys. Uh, so I'm in the middle of a move. I'm moving down to Miami. And so in the middle of this sort of like transition period, things are pretty hectic. So I'm just like straight up. I'm just locked in on trading. I'm locked in on the chart addicts members, the advanced coaching. We're locked in on making sure the Enigma app continues to have that high win rate that we promised. And so I'm just all the way locked in. But as soon as I move down there and I get settled, the content is going to be next level. Because obviously I want to show you guys how to trade. This is what the whole fucking reason that we're here. But there's so much out there. What do you do with your trading profits? Like, this is the shit that I feel like the conversation just has stopped here. We're just going to become traders and just stop here. Where, what the fuck do we do with the money next? Right? Is it the Amazon stores? Is it real estate with these high inflate, with these high interest rates? What is the play? What's the next thing? And so I want to show you guys what everybody's living like and how everybody's kind of like, positioning themselves and how everybody's been able to invest the trading profits into other things and how, you know, you're able to build a lifestyle of time, freedom and whatever you want to do. So it's going to be a really, really dope series, honestly. Me, I'm a boring guy. We just sit here and we build technology and we build, you know, the best teams together to be able to help traders. That's, that's what I do. That's what, you know, God put me on this earth to do two things, right? To give back and to help people become successful traders. That's it. So for me, I got a pretty boring lifestyle, but um, the stuff that we do behind the scenes really does need to be documented. When we're doing some of this crazy stuff, it just is going, uh, you know, obviously we got the phone archives and shit, but we got to put together some content. All the shit could be a fucking movie, all the stuff that we do in the back end. Okay, yeah, let's do gold. I kind of got sidetracked here. Look at this shit, man. I'm trading views on it. Look at this guy. Just the invalids. Like, somebody got paid to make that design. I hope you guys understand that. Someone got paid a check for that. Yeah, if I'm going to be honest with you, massive massive liquidity zone right here so we're seeing price start to slow down here which like the first instinct is to be like oh well that means the market's going to drop however let's talk about the basics we got a low here higher low higher low higher low higher high higher high higher high well, we might see a pullback to the 1780 region at 1780. As long as it holds that, I think we can continue to push up. If it breaks 1780, I think that the market's gone. But um, there is a really good opportunity here at the 1780. So gold, head and shoulders. I see that. I'm telling y'all, one more retest of 1780 would be a really good buy position to the upside because everybody's looking at this double bottom support, support, support. And they're like, okay, well, this thing has kind of has to launch through. It's about to smack. It's about to smack people out of the fucking sky. So, you know, this, that would be the trade. Obviously, wait, let me, let me fix the risk on that. That's horrendous. So don't take the trade like that. 
Let me adjust the risk. 78 entry stops below the swing low. The two and a half to one R and R. Where am I taking this profit? Take it back up to previous highs. About a 2.9 to one R and R. It's a better R and R if you're being stingy with the stop loss. And so, how do you how do you get stingy with? I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna show you guys some stuff. Actually, no, I'm gonna save this for the chart addicts call. All right, chart addicts, don't let me forget. I'm gonna show you guys some serious serious sauce on how to take your trade from being a freaking two and a half to one R and R to an almost six to one R and R. And not just by moving your stop loss up, because this shit's going to get hit. I guarantee this shit's going to get hit. But, I, uh, you know, don't let, me, don't let me forget how, uh, don't let me forget to show you guys later. Wait for the breakthrough. Push up. Enter on the retest. All right. Don't clown yourself. 1780 longs, gold. Y'all got that. Okay, so daily. I know we already went through Euro USD, but let me go through this one more time. Here's that wick rejection. This whole area here, area of interest for shorts. If the market closes below this previous wick, if the daily candle closes below this previous wick, the body, then we can actually start to see some, some moves to the downside. What I'd like to see is the market consolidate here for a little bit, push up to the 1.04 zone, and then we can get a really, really nice short to the downside. 1.04, don't forget it. Be there or be square. GJ, GJ, GJ. You guys can thank me for this one later. This is going to be the swing trade of a century. This is going to, this is the trade. It's the trade I'm looking for, y'all. This is the trade I'm looking to, you know, to be involved in. Bring Sean Lee to the podcast. Fuck no. What? Fuck no. Uh, he said it's tested 1785 multiple times. Don't don't get smacked at 1785, brother. Don't wait till 1780. I'm just I'm gonna just tell it to you like how it is. You know what, people? I'm gonna just uh, I'm just gonna. Tell it to you guys exactly how it is. And let's see if you guys are going to get more value out of it. If you enter at 1785, you're going to become fish food, right? What is fish food? Fish food is you're going to become liquidity for somebody who entered at the right price. Don't do that. This is Nas rejection. Nas, ooh, got to get back on the ball. GJ, thank me later. 160 to 160.4. Scaling in for longs for the swing trade of a century. Okay, market has opened. Market opened about eight minutes ago. We had a massive liquidity grab down. And we're getting a push up. If this 15 minute candle closes above the support, we can look to go in for longs. I think it's a bit early to go for longs. I think we can still get one more push down, but uh, let's see. This could be the low. It's retesting this previous area of lows, testing the London session highs already. Yeah, that could be the zone. This could be our buying level. So we'll give it a few minutes, let it cook up. Not a few minutes, probably like 15, 20 minutes. Let it cook up. I do wanna see it pull back down a little bit lower. Let's get out our handy dandy FIP tool and let's clean up this whole thing. Really choppy opening though. I just gotta give it some time. Every single day, the market does the same shit. It whipsaws. It comes down to test a certain level and it whipsaws. You give it long enough, it'll tell you the direction. I think the market's gonna fly from here, honestly. I do too. But I need that closure, man. 
because the market can just smack right back down. We get this closure above, which is basically in five minutes or in four minutes, then we can actually see a nice push to the upside. No, it's too early. Too early, too early, too early. I was thinking, I was like, what is the risk if I enter a position here and then if it comes <laughs> down, I scale, I scale in? Um, Wait for the 61, maybe? Yeah, 61. 61 retest would be ideal. Yeah. The thing is, like, there's two trades here. I'm thinking about it all as the one, one, like, the same trade, which is basically, here's the two trades. Here's trade one. You're basically betting on that candle flipping. Yeah. And not, and not coming back down to that zone. And if it hits stop loss, then you could re enter at a few different areas. Yeah. It's a long wick. I like that, though. Bullish. Yep. It is still early for me, though. I still need one more push. I think it's going to come up here, get to the second high, and then start to retrace back down if it breaks through we will get one more retest later in the session same exact zone Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to get that retest, y'all. Hey, no retest, no entry. Yep. It'll, it'll come. It'll come. We did get one retest down here. Like this, this, this could be the retest, but I need to confirm first. I'm not going to buy the breakout off of no confirmations. And so yeah, nah. I'd, I'd much rather wait for this trade. My phone just spazzed out. It retested the, the London session high, kind of like this consolidation like down below yeah, there. Yeah, literally. The, the second yellow line is already retested. Yeah. This one here. About 50% retracement. It's kind of weak if you ask me, but yeah, that's a that's a risky trade, brother. For a buy, brother, just fucking breathe. It's only been two minutes since the last since the last time we looked. Just get up here. I'll go on the thirty minute. Make it easier. There's still I'm still not in a trade. If it wants to pop off, like let it pop off, but. If I don't get a confirmation, I'm not looking to just be in a trade. So just let it play out, give it another 20, 30 minutes, and then you're going to have the answer. All right, let's get back on YouTube. Let me know if you guys got these questions. We'll be interested to see if gold breaks between 1790 and 86 to potentially go lower. Okay, oh, that's an old one. Now it's pulling back hard. Get up on the higher time frames. Why not Sean Lee? Bro. Next person, bro. The next person to mention Sean Lee's getting kicked off this fucking stream. All right. There's uh, I'm not even going, I'm not even going to give him that attention. Oh, oh, oh. Again, that retracement. That's what we need.
So the 61 is right here. The 88.6 is all the way down here. I'll wait for price to get down to the 61. That's going to be 13,425. And then 13,410. Those are my two entries that I'm looking to get in on. So when the price gets to that zone, I'm looking to enter those buy positions. Shit, this could be the entry right now, just off of the retest. Oof. All right, I'm going to enter a long position. If we break above this, this candle high at 13,470, I'm going to enter a long position. About 9.45, so about 15 minutes after the market open. We've already had price push up before the market opens. We've already had a fake up. Price came back to retest the previous lows. And then price wicked back into the range to grab liquidity. So we've already had two confirmations of liquidity back inside the, the range. And price is still closing back above. So we get this closure back above. We're most likely not pulling back for the deeper retest. And then we can just go long probably off of uh, 13,470. Trading breakouts, very risky, not my favorite trades. I'll still take a scalp though, uh, but just letting you know, I'd much rather get that deeper retracement because that's where, obviously we're gonna get a higher probability trade. I don't buy high. I do not buy high. I want low. I want to buy low. That retest that first came down, that should have been a buy limit, honestly, at 13,450. Bounced off the 50%, came back to retest the 38 to make a higher low. That, that would have been the better entry. So still early. Let's see if we get a deeper retest. Deeper retest make for the best entries. If it breaks out, all good. 13,500, 13,600. That'll be a good area. So higher time frame levels on NAS, just so I can show you. We got this level over here at 13,500. This is sort of like where I'm expecting the market to go up and just tap. And then I think we're going to get a rejection off this uh, 13,500. If we have a clean breakthrough 13,500, the next area of interest is 13,750. So that's why I'm not too like eager to just buy at the breakout because we're so close to the 13,500 resistance level that unless I get a pretty good entry, it's a pretty risky position. From here to up here, that's at least an 80 point move. The risk is about 40. We get, it's a nice two to one. If we get a better entry, it could be a three to one trade. Um, going long at the breakout here, this is just asking for trouble. We've got 40 points until we hit major resistance zone. And then, if it, I mean, obviously it, it can break through, but that to me, the risk doesn't make sense. You're going for 40 and you're risking 50. So pull back or no trade. All right, so we're forming a smaller time frame double top here. We might have one more retracement to the downside. This is kind of like fingers crossed because I do want to get this. I do want to get this entry. 
but I wouldn't be surprised if this thing starts pushing because we've already made an impulsive push to the upside. We've already formed a higher low. We're making another higher low. If the lows continue to get higher, this thing could push up from here. If the market comes down and wicks this one more time, but closes back above, that's another very, very, very good sign. So we just hang out, basically just wait for a better entry. If the market leaves, there's no reason to chase. So all we have to do is just wait for the market to pull back. He says, can we look at gold? We already did 1780 longs. If it breaks through 1780, wait for it to break back above. If it just doesn't want to break back above, then the market's going to go bearish. 1780. Did you take any trades yesterday, Roy? Yes. Uh, I scalped shorts on a live stream with the Chart Addicts team. Took it from the 88.6 down to the 61. It was a quick, like, it was a quick trade. Um, I got stopped and break even like three times. I had to re-enter and I took a long towards the end of the market. Close. Once it hits 13,500, will you be waiting for a call, uh, pull back, or just, uh, just confirmation of candles? Yeah, we need, to, we need to see that rejection. No rejection, no entry. I'm pretty confident we're going to break through the 13,500, but I think it's going to be one of these slow down, breakthrough, push up, come back under, slow down, and a breakthrough type zones where the market just makes people think it's going to reject, rejects a little bit, but ends up really going bullish. That's what I think is going to happen. This, okay, imagine buying here. Like, ladies and gentlemen, I know a lot of people are like, well, the market's just going to start pushing. Why don't we just get in now? Because we think it's going to go up. Let's take a look at something real quick. If you took this trade right here, and your TP1, is that 13,500 key level. You're gonna have a 0.4 risk and reward, all right? This is why we don't buy the top of the market. Even if you had a TP, at the 13,600, or let's call it, where was that last one? It was 575. It's good, but it's not even a two to one. So if you're just like, well, I just want to be in the trade because it's already broken out and made a retest and I want to go long. Look at the fucking situation you're putting yourself in. So waiting for a better entry is not just about like, it's not like a, like a fucking, this is not a game. It's not a game like, oh, who can get the best entry? It's like, if you get a shitty entry, you are not going to make money. You might make money on this trade, but every trade you lose is going to eat up your wins. So you have to get a good risk and reward trade or else you're going to be constantly, you know, this is a negative. The winners will never make up for the losers. We had a double bottom at the 50, a higher low at the 38. If price holds the 38 here, this could be our entry. Thirteen four forty. Hmm.
Damn. Come on. Still printing a higher low, but shitty entry. Again, not a good place. Need that pull back in one more time. 13, four. I know I said 440 before, but it's 13, 450 actually. They don't have to laying the trap for sellers. Yeah, for sure. On the live call for Trialix member, how long do you stream for daily? Um, usually I'm here until the move plays out. Around 11 a.m., once the London session officially closes and there's that like overlap where things are dry, that's usually when I'll get off and I'll continue to update the team based uh, just in Discord on my channel. So I'll be talking about, all right, this is the same trade that we saw yesterday or this is the same trade that I've been calling. Price comes down to 13,300 and we get a push up. Never really got it to 13,300, did we? Not a higher low. So I do keep the folks updated through this channel. I post my kind of swing trade positions, all these ideas. And then as a trade is playing out, I post updates. So I'll be on here till the trade plays out, but usually until 11 a.m. Eastern. So it's like right after the London session closes and it gets dead, that's when I'll go through. Maybe the NASDAQ run is tomorrow. That's honestly what I think. I think that today is going to be extremely dry, but I think that as long as it creates these higher lows here, we have an opportunity to take like a scalp position and to just eat this little bit of the market to get out this trade. So I'm drawing this most recent impulse with a fib on the five minute. Yes, on the five minute, relax. One more pullback in the range and we should be good to go. Yeah, this thing, ain't, I don't think it's running yet. Let me just be honest with y'all. I think it still has a little bit of room to, to retest. If it starts to push, let it go. We catch retracements. This really would have been the best entry. Double bottom, but I did want to see it come down a little bit lower. Now what we're seeing is the price has created a low here, and then it's created a higher low. And so what I want is a retest of that higher low one more time and a continuation. I think the market's going to be very choppy today, which is why I'm confident we'll get one more retest back in. Even though we've already made two retests, um, I'm confident we get one more. That higher low down here might have been the trade. All right, this might have been the trade, but I think that we can see one more. I don't buy breakouts. The risk and reward is trash on a breakout trade. You guys can see it. Take it up to the extension with the risk. It's a one-to-one R&R. &R. To me, not that attractive. Pull back in. Two and a half to one. So it's still a better trade. If it runs, it runs, people. What it's going to do is it's going to run for 120 points or 130 points or 140 points. And then eventually it'll come back for a retracement later in the session and we can just catch the retracement. massive push up so that was the retracement honestly i was a little slow on the ball today just look just looking for an extra confirmation but like i said we'll just wait for a pullback later in the session and try to catch another entry 
for now, we just allow the market to play out. We'll see how it reacts around the 13,500 zone, which I think it's going to break through and then retrace real quick. After that sharp retest, if it continues to make a higher low, that's our next entry. Is it hit the like button? Yes. If you guys are on YouTube, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Just hit like and subscribe if you guys are on this. How do I calculate risk on NAS? Do you have any good websites, Roy? Um, the one that I use is like, honest to God, it's the one that we put up on the chart addict site. It's under resources for the members. If you guys go to the lot size calculator, it's basically just like an Excel sheet that you can download and you just put in your account size and then just measure the risk with this tool on trading view. So you do the long short position. It'll show you how many pips you're risking on the downside. So 264 pips, that's actually 26 points. 26 points is what I use. I'll pull up the Excel sheet if it wants to load. Where is it at? Okay, here she is. All right, uh, it's, it's spazzing right now. But basically, I just look here, and you guys can see the different columns. There's the stop loss column on the left and the lot size column on the right based on the account size and the risk that you're supposed to take. So this one was 26 points of risk. If, we, if it comes back down to entry, let's call it 30. And so for a 100K account, you can use 3.33 lots, and that'll equal $1,000. The bigger the stop loss, the lower the lot size you can use. The lower the stop loss, the better or the higher the lot size you can use. So that's the game. So where am I at right now? I lost the tab I was on. My bad, yo. Said NAS ripped up like crazy. Yeah. I mean, it did, it did continue to create higher lows. That's going to be the next natural move of the market. Guys, keep in mind, if you're watching this, I'm not one of these traders that just, like, I just, I'm going to get on here and just catch a trade no matter what. I have a specific strategy. If the market did not come down and hit my risk and reward parameters, I don't want to just be in a trade, right? That's not, that's not how trading goes. There's been plenty of times where I've, you know, I've obviously done that on the streams. You guys have seen it. It doesn't work out. If I don't get the right risk and reward that I need for my trades, I don't just enter the markets. I know how to be patient and wait for the market to push. I know how to be patient and wait for pullbacks. So for me, I'm not too, you know, uh, pressed about missing a trade, quote unquote. Because then we could all talk about how I missed this trade. We could all talk about how I missed this trade. We could talk about how we missed the shorts. We can talk about missing trades all day, or we can talk about re-entries. So that's the... Uh, that's my mind frame when I'm looking at trades. It's like sometimes the market moves. If it doesn't, if it doesn't do what you want it to do, there's no harm done. Is it better to withdraw your profits through a crypto wallet? I mean, it doesn't really matter. If you're withdrawing with crypto, you don't really have a lot of choices. You're either going to have to withdraw to a wallet, to an exchange, to Cash App. There's basically anything that you can uh, accept crypto through. So it's up to you. Look at the fees, look at the security, and then make that decision. Beautiful double bottom entry. So why do a lot of people fail in trading, y'all? I'm, sh I'm literally showing you guys the higher lows. There's, I mean, I, we didn't take a trade today. So obviously there was no, there's no money being made at this right this second. I mean, okay, granted, I'm still in a trade from yesterday, right? So I'm, there's, some, there's money being made, but there's no money being made on this stream right now. But there's also nothing being lost. And so the whole thing is, why do a lot of people fail at trading? Is because in the moment like this, they start to convince themselves that they're losing something as if you were like in drawdown or whatever. It's I'm missing out on such, a, such an aggressive move that I'm losing money. It's like the same feeling. That's all in your fucking head. Like the, the fear of losing money is all in your head. It's not fucking real. The missing out on a trade is not fucking real. It's all in your head. Losing money is real. 
risking money on a, on a risky trade and not getting the result you want, that has a real consequence. Miss, the fear of missing a trade or the FOMO of, be, of not being in a trade, those are all delusions. So a lot of traders fail because they can't separate the difference between the two, right? The feeling of missing on this trade to like 30% of the people on this call feels the same as losing a trade or worse. Now, why is that such a bad thing? Because then people start to buy highs as the market's going. Then all of a sudden the market goes up a little bit and it comes back to retrace. And upon that retracement, we get a pullback of the real move. So patience really is the name of the game. Everybody wants to be in a trade, but nobody wants to wait for a high probability trade. Everybody wants to, you know, like catch every retest and catch every entry, but they're not being mindful of the risk and reward. So you can have anything you want in trading, but you have to have a disciplined strategy that you're sticking to. Can't just enter every retest or every trade if there's no clear, like if the risk and reward doesn't make sense for your account, et cetera, et cetera. Major keys. We talked about this the other day. It's the reason that people lose in trading is either they don't know what they're doing or they know what they're doing and they're fucking up the system through impatience, greed, fear, all these other things. If you have a clear system, follow it. That's what I do on these calls. Like the problem, that this, is, yeah, this is gonna get me a little riled up, but this is, the, this is really, I think, a, a reason that like 90% of traders lose and 10% of traders win. And you every day have a choice of which basket you wanna fall into. Well, which basket you wanna fall under. So people come to a certain course, like let's say anybody's course, anybody who's a swing trader. You get in the course and the person doesn't call a trade for like a week and a half or two weeks, because it's a swing trader. People are like, oh, this person doesn't know how to trade. Oh, he missed this. Oh, there's this. Oh, there's that. Oh, there's this. When in reality, you have to be mindful about the strategy that's being used. And so develop a strategy that's high probability. And you'll start to realize that those trades are pretty far and few between. And that's where you're, when you're going to have to really learn patience and discipline. So some people here are thinking about missing a trade. Some people here are saying that there weren't enough confirmations and we're waiting for a retest. Your perception of what just happened is gonna make or break your opportunity, kind of the opportunity zone that you're in. If you tell yourself you're missing something, if you're coming from a place of um, scarcity, for example, like there's not a million fucking trades coming after this, you're gonna limit your opportunity flow. You're gonna, you're gonna limit the zone, the mental zone that you need to be in to find opportunities. If you're telling yourself that there's a million opportunities coming and all I have to do is wait for the right one, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get the right one. So mindset, mindset in trading is the single most important thing. Um, I think a lot of people lose because they simply cannot get over the fact that they're not in a trade. It's like the, 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 the thought that somebody may, caught this trade and they're making money and the person who's watching this did, like, is not in a, who, who didn't take the entry is not in a trade. That really makes some people uncomfortable. But can you guys realize how fucking stupid that is? Like there aren't a million trades coming in after. I know I'm kind of reiterating that, but let's just be real. Um, if you don't remind yourself of the important things, then FOMO will... FOMO is going to come for you. It says, Roy, besides daily levels, do you mark off intraday zones every day? If yes, on which time frame do you do that? Probably one hour and four hour. One hour and four hour are my favorite zones. Four hour levels, four hour levels. Market really broke. Like we really could have taken this, really could have taken that early entry, but uh, no need to rush it. I think price is going to get caught in here first. Let's stick to the four hour actually. Yeah, I think price is going to get caught around this median line. I think it's going to push up, come back under the retest, push back up, come back under the retest. And I think it's going to be playing around this zone a lot today. So if there's any opportunity, it's going to be in. 
measuring this next impulsive push wherever it might land. Waiting for that 38 retest, a shallow retest, 38.50, double bottom 50 continuation. When price is in, in momentum, look for shallower retests, 30 to 50%. That's what I'm gonna be looking to do. Guys, rock solid, rock solid. I could be feeling some type of way about missing this candle, but uh, all right, let me, be, let me just be completely honest. I do feel some kind of way about missing the candle, but the opportunity zone is still focused on, or my mental state is still focused on opportunities. I'm still in that opportunity zone. That window is wide open. All I have to do is find this retest. Have you thought of being a psychology coach? I mean, what do you guys think we do? Look, in case you guys don't know what the core function of what I represent and what Chart Addicts is, we're not just a podcasting platform. Chart Addicts since 2018 is a personal coaching platform. We have multiple coaches that work with hundreds and hundreds of traders around the world virtually, one-on-one -on -one, to help you improve in trading. We have one goal and one goal only is to help you improve, right? There's a bunch of, obviously there's a, there's a process to becoming a successful trader. You have to take the steps to becoming a better person, to becoming a better trader in general. But through the help of a coach, almost anybody can succeed in trading. So Chart Addicts is a personal coaching platform. Our traders have access to us. Have traders, our, our traders have access to um, our education calls that we do daily. They have access to the private chats where they can interact with us, the courses that we've made where we literally teach the same things psychology, mindset, risk, everything. So yeah, have I thought about being a psychology coach? I uh, already am one, Chart Addicts FX. That is the place to be. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the move of the day. So I don't think that we're gonna be able to catch like a, a big ass move until probably two, three, four hours from now because the market's basically gonna shoot and just overshoot and break the zone. Why? Because everybody in retail is selling right now. Everybody in retail is selling right now off of this massive liquidity zone, which is why the market makers are going to use this as a perfect opportunity to swipe through that range, crush everybody out of their trade, and then head up to a more attractive level, like the 13,800 to 14,000 area. So I think that we're going to continue bullish and then we're going to stall for the day. Like I genuinely believe that we're just going to push up here. All right, close, retest, continue to push, and then make a massive retest and then come up. And all the while, sitting in the same fucking range, basically. So... Nice, probably 120, 140 point range here for the day that we can play around. The market's in the middle of an impulsive push right now. If you're looking to get back in, wait for the market to do a sharp retracement. Some potential zones, use your fibs, top bottom. Find the 38 and the 50, coincide it with previous areas of structure. See if you can get a pullback, the 13, 500, that sort of area, wick through and push up. Potential retests. But as of now, I think this was the trade for the day. This is that, that one massive push. Everything else is going to be pretty choppy. Smaller time frame opportunity. If you guys are on YouTube, make sure you check out that. Obviously, we have the Expert Trader podcast series, but we literally just launched a brand new course for crypto. We're going to be launching a different episode every single week. We're going to be showing you guys exactly how to understand the crypto market because everything in the next five years Everything that's going to be built in the next 10 years is going to have crazy names. It's going to be shit that none of us have ever heard of. It's going to be very confusing and all this other crap. But as long as you understand that it's all going to be built on top of these concepts of what a blockchain is, what a token is, what a coin is. Once you understand those different facets of crypto, you'll be able to understand everything that's being built over the next 5, 10, 15 years. So major key, make sure that you guys are educating yourselves. If you're interested in seeing what Chart Addicts members have to say, we have another series here. If I can just go to the playlist. We have another series here called the Student Spotlight Series. We're going to be launching a different episode every week. It'll base, It's going to be a chance for you guys to 
hear from uh, people who are Char Addicts members who were successful, what they did, how they succeeded, how they, were able, how they were able to take advantage of personal coaching to become a successful trader. So if you guys want to see it from their eyes, please make sure to go check out those videos. Obviously, Institutional Insights, we've interviewed everybody from TradingView, Awanda, Awanda, shout out to Awanda, shout out to TradingView, brokers, um, the actual platform we're trading on. We have connected with just about everybody in the trading industry. And that's why like all the stuff we're building in the back end is pretty, you know, we're trying to do some pretty big things for traders in the back end. All right. Um, NASDAQ is already gone. So at the end of the day, the market's made its move. GJ doing a minor pullback. I think we're going to get a pullback of the zone and then we're going to continue to crush down to the 160 buy level where we can go heavy. Shout out to our very own Anthony Hewless who called this trade. The most incredible, incredible trade. This guy got it from the fucking wick. We have the single greatest crypto trading team in the fucking world. I'm convinced. I don't even trade crypto. I buy crypto. The market's recovered. Price is already back at 24. I do expect us to pull all the way back to 38, maybe 40, right? We're having a relief rally right now in the crypto market. We're going to be rallying up to about 40K on, on Bitcoin. And then we're going to, we might have one more push back to the downside. So keep that in mind. UJ retracement, dollar retracement, NASDAQ pushing. So people are getting out of the dollar and they're getting into these risky assets, yo. I think the inflation print from yesterday has people very confident in the fact that the Fed's going to stop uh, tapering in the interest rates. Jesus. All right, everybody. So not going not gonna to spend too much time on the charts. After the original move happens, what I would do is if I, if I was trading by myself is I would just walk away. Because the longer I stare at this candle form, the more I'm going to be um, just sort of just feeling some kind of way, which is basically just the entry was right there for us, about 110 points. It could have just been a one and done, but that's not a rational thing for me to do because I need to be looking at the opportunities that are going to come next. So normally if I was trading by myself, I'd get off the charts. I would set alerts. So right click, add an alert. I would add an alert at all the levels that I'm waiting for the market to pull back. So 13, 500. I'm on the wrong account. Add a quick alert 13500 so i get notified when the market retraces back to that zone or if it retraces back to that zone and then i'm going to set another alert down at my entry down here ah oh, jesus this thing is still pushing whoa all right everybody so i'm not going to be doing any more trading for the session because that's basically that was the that was the trade sometimes you wait for an entry doesn't happen most important thing to focus on the next opportunity, keep it pushing. And that's basically it. Um, in terms of news, no real big news events this week. The next major news that I'm looking at in terms of the recession watch is the uh, GDP print later this month. So August 25th, basically the 25th of every month, they launched the inflation print. Or sorry, the GDP print. The GDP print that sent us into two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth that's been expected to like be the marker of the recession that was technically a preliminary report it was technically like an estimate the real report comes out on the 25th we'll see if gdp is still declining if gdp did decline in the second quarter for the next for two consecutive quarters i think that's when we'll get a sell-off so for now we're bullish obviously it's breaking through all of these levels because there are tons of sellers here people there are so many sellers at the 13 500 zone that it's just not even funny so what we're going to see here is a very aggressive breakthrough to smash through all the sellers on its way to the 13,800 zone. So just wait for a pullback and let's see if we can get, at least get a re-entry.
people get played with their emotions, which makes them enter risky trades. I get that for sure. A lot of people say, a lot of people say, oh, I was going to take it. This is my favorite thing that I hear after the streams. Oh, I was going to take it here, but I hesitated because you didn't get in. And what? Well, da, 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 da. I promised you guys I was going to be truthful on these streams. Let me tell you one thing. The easiest thing to do after you don't take a trade is to shift the blame as to somebody else. Oh, I was going to enter a buy, but I saw you post a sell and that's why I didn't enter. That's why you didn't enter. Right? Because I posted something over, like I did something over here. And so you didn't do something over here. If some of you guys are confident in this, in these trades and you saw the opportunity off the double bottom, you should have entered. But what you cannot do is put is, is shift the blame for why you didn't enter because I have a different strategy. But like, well, because Roy didn't enter that buy, I didn't want to enter it, but I saw it and I should have entered and I could have entered and should have, could have, would have. If you should have entered, you would have entered. You didn't enter because the confidence wasn't there. And so do not shift the blame. Look at yourself honestly and ask yourself, what did I miss? So there's, there's, a, you know, that's, there's a very easy path to success in trading is you have to ask yourself, what didn't I see in order to enter this trade? So this is strictly speaking to the people that feel some kind of way about missing, missing the trades or not entering that position. Now, did anybody enter the position? This is always the most fun part. If you're watching this, we also offer signals. We have an 88.6 or an 88% win rate. It's 88.6. We have an 88% win rate. Um, Enigma FX.app. So a free signals app is probably the easiest thing that you guys can use in trading. You might not even want to take the trades, but you can at least study. Um, if you want to do yourself a favor, you will open an account and take advantage of this free trial. Because imagine, okay, it's 97 bucks for the monthly access to the, to the signals app. Imagine that you took a few trades on the app in the meantime, and you made enough money for three, four, five months off the free trial, right? So it's kind of a steal if you think about it. The results speak for themselves. They are posted. The trade results are posted on the app. So you can see the one week, two week, three week, four week, five week average of all the trades. You can see the winning trades. You can see the trade history. So download it for free. Verify all the shit for yourself. But I'm telling you guys, there really hasn't been an easier way to make money in Forex in a long time. Obviously, everybody has a signals group and you can copy and paste. We've all been there. But having an app that sends you Apple push notifications, no other BS, no messy chats, no bullshit fucking 50,000 messages in a group chat, you trying to find the signal, straightforward push notifications straight to your phone with everything you need to enter the trade. So EnigmaFX.app, highly recommended, shameless plug, obviously. We support this app. And so we're, uh, you know, I'm a very, very big believer in what it does. This is NAS 100 going to the moon. Why does this industry have a lot of scammers? Why does this industry have a lot of scammers? Bro, I'm, I'm, you're getting removed. Don't, don't be childish. Get out of here. Just stop spamming, man. It's scammers in all industries. Vante, I appreciate you having some common sense. FOMO is not good in the long run. FOMO is not good in the short run either. Like if you're having FOMO, you have not understood trading. You feel like the market owes you money. The market cannot pay you if you don't fucking enter trades. If you don't enter a fucking trade, you will not make money. If you're having FOMO because you didn't enter a trade, well, guess what? You didn't enter the trade. That's why you're not making the money. So instead of focusing on missing the trade, focus on why you didn't take it in the first place. What made you hesitate? What was it this? Was it the stream? Was it having somebody else and you, who you were trusting and looking for a confirmation, not confirm your bias? Was it the fact that you don't have a strategy and a clear strategy? You just want to be in a trade? Why did you miss the trade? FOMO... Like it, it doesn't have a place in trading at all. Short-term, long-term, it just doesn't make any sense, honestly. We might have a really sexy opportunity here, folks. We might have a really sexy opportunity here. I'm going to stay on for the next hour and a half. We making money. 
We make making money regardless. We're going to catch a trade and make some money. I'm going to show you guys how this shit's done. But this FOMO shit, that, that whole talk of FOMO needs to go out the window. All right? Because uh, you're just going to be losing money for the rest of your life. Being scared of trades, like being fucking, it's moving lights on a screen. All right? Stop fucking pussying in these trades. Like, hey, Roy, miss you, buddy. Had to come by and show some love to the fam. Charlene, yo, let me get you the Zoom call. Let me get you the Zoom link, actually. Yo, this is Charlene FX in the YouTube. Come on, y'all. What? Come on, y'all. Show some love in the chats to Charlene, y'all. Show some, show some love in the chats. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, put some love in the chat. Throw some emojis on here and give Charlene a warm welcome. Charlene, I'm going to send you the Zoom call to this if I can... Oh, there it is. Man, you guys know how MacBook is supposed to copy from the Mac to your to your uh, to your phone? That should stop working for me. All right, there we go. All right, Charlene, I just texted you the link. Hop on in and then we get it. All right, so we're getting some really nice rejection here. This could actually be a great opportunity if we close back above. I want to see price wick down and then close back above. Let's find that retest entry here. Sixty one. We could either pull back all the way to the 88.6. But I don't think that's going to happen. 50%, 61%, that looks like the zone right here. Beautiful, beautiful. And we got a re-entry, people. Vanessa says, Charlene, South Passe. It's Haitian talk in the chats. You guys, show some love. Show some love in the chats. Come on, give, give Charlene a warm welcome. And uh, let me see if I can actually bring on some special guests here. Let me see if I can pull on some special guests here. All right, let's see if we can get some, uh, let's see if we can get some guests in here. Because now that's a little bit later in the day, we can at least get a little bit of, uh, you know what I'm saying? A few people might be awake at this point. We can get a, get a little bit of uh, action in here.
All right, I don't, I don't want to be premature about this, but this could be the entry right here. This could be the entry. We really might not get a better chance, um, but I'll wait for that pullback, see if we can get a nice entry here. Charlene, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Give me a second. Let me get this up. Yo, this really could be the entry here. Market might just continue to push up. So there is a, there's a pretty sketchy trade right here. Does the R&R &R make sense? Yeah, it's about a two to one. It's about a two to one. The opportunity is there for, for that long. And we got Charlene in the Zoom. What's up? What up, Charlene? This is, there's a pretty sketchy trade right here. Whoa. Does the r and make sense? Where's that feedback coming from? Yeah, it's about a two to one. I think that's from Charlene. Charlene, you got your YouTube open? The opportunity is there for... for the My bad. I had to mute it real quick for the background noise. Get unmuted here. Yeah, if you guys are in the Zoom call, please give Charlene a warm welcome. Please give Charlene a warm welcome. What's going on, Roy? My bad. Yeah, I had the, I had the live stream on, the, on, my, on my YouTube when I logged in the Zoom. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Welcome so to the call. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's going on, everybody? We're doing good. Just every Thursday on here, trading live. Um, looking to catch this continuation on NASDAQ. Yes, yes. Yo, I've Good. sent so many of, uh, of my students to your to your channel and to, and to you because a lot of people are interested in Nas. So I'm like, hey, this is the guy you got to go to. This is the people you got to watch. Um, so I've been curious. Everyone's been hitting me up about Nas. They're like, hey, if you trade gold, you should look at Nas. You know, it moves so, so perfect, this and that. So I'm like, all right, let me, who, who can I learn from? All right, let me go to my Charlene. boy. <laughs> I'm, hum I'm humbled. Relax. <laughs> you saying learning from me. No, I appreciate that for sure. I don't know if you heard, but I'm actually moving down to Florida, moving down to Miami. You told me. You told me last time we had lunch. Yeah, but that was <laughs> that was a long time ago. I was like, oh, I want to move down here. I want to move down here. Wanting to move down and actually moving down different ball game. That's, that's I'm, awesome. uh, I'm really going to make that play this month. That's awesome. Are you coming this month? Wow. Yeah, it's going to be end of August or probably going to be beginning of September. Oh, man, that's amazing. That's amazing. Congrats on that. Congrats. We're getting the, the whole family down here. Everybody's moving to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, I'm mostly hey, uh, prepping I, for the summit next year, so I'll be around. That's awesome. Hey, I haven't announced it on my IG yet, but uh, I left my job uh, last week. So officially, officially done. No more. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Got to make now, some content. Got to make some content around it before I drop the news. Yeah, fuck yeah. Let's get on a podcast. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Let's do it. I'm, I'm so, so excited, so excited. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking to learn a little bit about Nas. I mean, I, I love gold. I'll always be trading gold, but you know, you're always a student of the game. You know, so yeah. If I can break down Nas, once it starts moving in a specific direction, it'll keep going in that direction for a while. So you can see, like the the whole first half of the year, the market's been bearish, and then we kind of went sideways, and now we're in a little bit of a turnaround. And what happens in these like when the market kind of shifts its momentum is all these, these uh, daily zones that people are looking to short from the market stalls here, gets a bunch of people to think that it's selling and then smashes. Same with this. 
It's coming up here. It's most likely going to consolidate here and then go through and smash. Eventually, once the fundamentals kind of play in, that's when I'm looking for the market to continue the downtrend. And so for the meantime, on the smaller time frames, this thing just aggressively just pushes. You can see all the lower highs, lower highs forming. So like the smaller time frame trading is really just in the in the direction of the momentum. That's what I do. Are you in this trade now, Roy? Uh, no, I'm not. I was waiting for these candles. You see these wicks down here? Yeah. I was waiting for them to come down a little bit lower to this zone, this previous uh, buying area. Mm -hmm. it, like, it didn't even get close. And then over here, came back to retest. I missed the entry. I'm just letting this thing run for now. Um, we're at this previous high up here, the 13,500 zone. So I'm expecting price to break and retest that on the smaller time frames and just continue to push up, which is what we have right now. So based off what you said, you wanted to take your entries. I'm assuming that you trade Nas off supply and demand. Yep. Gotcha. That's simple. Gotcha. I just basically look for an impulsive wave. I'll look for a retracement. All right. If you think you're entering too early, you probably are. You'll get this liquidity grab. Then your entry is going to be on the retest. Nice. Continue to push up. It could just push up from here. I know some folks in the chat entered a long position here already. And we're looking to take it up through the five, the, through the 585 zone. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale a position. Actually, how, do, how many pips are we? No, that risk and reward ratio is trash. <laughs> I'm going to let it go. We're pretty close to resistance. If the risk and reward ratio for me to get in this trade isn't at least two to one, I just can't take the trade. If we get a lower entry though, just a little bit of a lower entry, that'll be the right move. Or even if it comes back for a double bottom here, that's still a two to one. Where price is right now, that's a one to one. So very risky trade or very risky trade. I want to wait for that pullback. And see if we can go long. Discipline. That discipline is everything. It's everything. All NASDAQ does on the smaller time frame is just create a bunch of FOMO. And then a bunch of people start to enter late. Like, for example, everyone who's entering right now, once this thing starts to retrace a little bit, they're going to be in so much drawdown, it'll make their head spin. So the reason that you don't want to enter while the market's in motion is because it always retraces. And uh, yeah, just kind of plays around on the smaller time frame, creates these patterns to entice people like, like this, for example, head and shoulders right here, to entice people to go a specific direction. And then it'll just create a higher low and continue to push. And so right now the market is pushing through, it's breaking back through the 13,500 key level. All right, once we start to create some higher lows again, we know the market's back in motion and we take it up. The FOMO traders get crushed. The people who got tired and just left get crushed and the patient make money. Gospel right there. Eric said, I took the buys. I took the buys. Congrats. He said, it's going to come down. Got wicks up on the top. I don't, don't even know what that means. I'm in cells at 13553. I'd get out of here pretty soon, brother. Just letting you know. I'm in SPX 500 buys. I'm up deep. Yep. US 30 and SPX both still bullish. So we're at the monthly key level. I'm telling you guys, short sellers are lining up here like a fucking piranhas. Piranhas, piranhas, piranhas. You guys can see massive selling zone here. Basically, we either do a little shallow test and push or just a straight push through. After that, we have these liquidity zones that I'm watching on the higher time frames, and that's where I'm looking for my next areas of interest. So you, can, you guys can just mark these off. 13,800 is the first one, and then the real, real, real sell zone, 14,000 flat. Swing trade back down, big money moves. Oh, my alert just hit.
this all this shit on my screen? Roy, do you trade US 30 as well? Or just NAS? Uh, I only trade NAS. I don't trade I don't trade US 30, but I'll look at it. Okay. All right, so I'm not taking the trade unless we see a wick back above the buy zone. Then we could take the trade there. The most attractive entry, honestly, would be back in this area. If we want to get like a better risk and reward entry. Oh, baby. That's a three to one right there. So we had this most recent impulse right here. Here's the top of the range. Measure it with a fib. We've retraced about 61%. If the market wicks and closes above the 50, I'm entering the trade. If the market continues to push down, 13,450. No rejection, no entry. No rejection. Finish it for me in the chats, y'all. No rejection, no entry. All right, type that out, actually. Type it in the chats if you guys are on YouTube. Put no rejection, no entry. We talk about fibs all the time and everyone's like, fibs don't work, fibs don't work. Well, it's because you're entering at the fib level without any confirmations. Let's be completely honest here. So Emil said he wants to get on the stream. That could be really interesting. Let's go. Man, James still asleep. Oh, man. <sighs> come on, come on, come on. Need this thing to push down a little bit. Let some air out of this market. Come down to the zone. And we can get a pretty good entry. Now, if I'll be completely honest, if I had to, if I'm a betting man, I do see us consolidating in this range. There's like a box here where we, we've already established the high of the session and the low of the session. I don't see us breaking out of those two, honestly. I do see the market continuing to trend lower, then pushing back higher, and then retesting lower and kind of finishing the day on some like really, really weak activity. Tomorrow, I think we'll get a, a really solid push. Um, from NASDAQ straight through all the levels. If it's not tomorrow, then obviously next week. But I do see today being a little bit choppy. What I'm trying to do before the stream is over is just catch my one trade. I need 60 to 80 points and I'm out of the market, people. I need 60 to 80 points and I'm out of the market. I'm going to go buy myself a steak lunch and just enjoy myself. And obviously create content for the CA members. Give me a second, guys. I got to plug in my laptop before this thing dies. Charlene, if I can ask you a question right before I get back, if you want to explain to the folks a little bit about your trading and what you look at, you do currencies, indices, kind of what, where are you with your, with trading right now? Yeah. So I trade strictly price action, mostly um, on gold. Uh, however, I do use fibs. Um, gold is, uh, it's my, it's my favorite pair now, simply because it just, the technicals on it are very, very easy for me to understand uh, market structure is king. No matter what pair that you trade, if you follow market structure, it won't let you down. You just have to apply that to your discipline and your patience factor. And you really can't go wrong with that. The, the, the more you wait, guys, and the more you analyze, the better trader you're going to become. Trust me, because you're going to become, your win rate is going to be so high when you wait on your setups that it's going to be easier for you to wait on your setup because you know that the probability of you winning the trade is much higher because you're waiting for price to come back to where you need it to come back to. If you have that FOMO, if you're rushing to just get in the trade just for the fact of being in a trade, you're going to find yourself taking a lot more L's than, than necessary when you could just be patient and wait. Because think about it. If you're already in a trade, now you have to wait for that trade to play out, right? So why not just wait for price to come back to where, to where you need it to come back to and then enter the trade? So basically, the way I trade is I just wait for price to come, come to my zones, come to the areas that I need it to come back to. And once the candles start showing the type of 
uh, reactions that I'm looking for, like rejections, closes, um, hard pushes, or coming back to specific key levels, then I just wait for structure to tell me when to get in and when to get out. And I'm a scalper. So, you know, I'm only catching, you know, 20, 30, 40 pips at, at, a, at, a, at a time um, on gold. So the best advice I can give is what you've been, is what Roy's been giving. Just being disciplined to wait for price to come back to your levels, not having FOMO. And that's it. That's, that's really all you need to be a successful trader. You really don't need much more than that. And don't, don't uh, over leverage because <laughs> I became profitable after I stopped over leveraging. When you, when you stop being greedy, you stop losing. <laughs> there we go. That's that. That was my favorite part. My, the thing that stood out to me the most was when you said it's easy to wait for those entries to be patient for it. When you know, it's a higher probability trade, when yeah. you're just waiting for the sake of waiting, it feels like, you know, it feels like it's, you're doing nothing, but if you're waiting for something, cause you know that that's a way better entry. And that thing is a lot more likely to hit waiting. Doesn't seem that bad anymore. It's just yeah. like, I know I'm going to make money if I wait long enough. So why not just keep waiting? And it feels better too. Cause it's like, once price comes back to where you want it to come back to, and it does what you thought it was going to do, you feel like the king of the charts. You're like, yeah, I'm the shit, you know? <laughs> we got to keep it in check. We got to keep it in check. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, for me, I, this is the, this is one thing I actually got from a Tim Grover book, who was Kobe Bryant's personal trainer. He was talking about coaches. He said, coaches take the blame when the team loses, but takes uh, but they don't take the credit when the team wins. The players take the credit when they win. The coach takes the blame when they lose. So it's kind of the same thing. If you do that with your trading, you, you start to think very strategically. When I win a trade, yes, I entered at the right place and I lot sized correctly and I did everything correctly, but the market really pushed. The market is, is the one that really did all the work and I can't take full credit for it. But when I lose a trade, I always ask myself what I did. And by doing that, I've just been able to be a lot more analytical. It stops me from getting cocky when I win and keeps me um, coachable when I lose. Most definitely. Most definitely. And you don't have to trade every day. A lot of traders That's think they have to trade every single day. You don't have to. You're not going to get your setups every day. Big facts. So this thing is retracing pretty hard. Like we talked about earlier is if you're chasing the markets, you're going to get caught in these retracements. I think that the 61 entry might be a little bit too low. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get up to the higher time frames here real quick. Remark my zones. Yeah, I was just gonna ask. Um, when price breaks, uh, your certain your certain zones, do you ever like move them around, or do you kind of stick what you already have based off the previous uh, analysis? Um, if I'm starting to see something different, I'll just adjust my zones. And so like when we were market open trading, I was looking for something specific. So I had all these smaller time frame levels here, but if I can clean this up, what I start to see is here's my first low, second low, my next low. Basically this would actually be a, a good entry around three thirteen four hundred. So the market could come all the way back down here before we flip. So what I'm looking for now is like, I don't want to enter too soon in the middle of this range, because if it does come back for a deeper retracement, that'll be the best entry. So I'll, I won't really adjust the zones as much as I'll, I'll adjust my entries based on how aggressive the market's moving and give myself a better chance to get a deep entry. So like I wanted a retest of this zone first, but the way that it's looking now, I can actually see it pull back a little bit lower. So what I want to do is have these two options here. And then I'll scale in. Actually, this needs to be below the last low. I'll enter a small position here. I'll enter a large ass position here. And I'll enter a retest position here. Are you holding to full TP? Uh, I'll close these guys, the higher trades. I'll close them at this structural level here. Okay. I'll take partial profits at the previous structural zone. And I'll leave a runner always. Because if I'm trading in the direction of the market, this thing could keep going. So if not forever, but like forever. Mm -hmm. So I'll just literally hold a running position and just pretend like it's not there. And then the next trades, I'll just keep doing the same thing. I load up at a different place. I'll trade in the direction of the market. I'll close out all the late trades and just leave the best position running in break even. Gotcha. Gotcha. Let me ask you something, Roy. Um, would you recommend Nas for a new trader? 
Like if you're fresh out out of, out of the gate. Um, I tell people to practice how they play. Because a lot of people tell me, Roy, I want to master currencies first, and then I'll move over to indices. Mm -hmm. In reality, they're, they're completely different beasts. It's like I'm going to master soccer, then I'm going to step into the UFC ring. Yeah. Like if, you want, if you want to be a good UFC fighter, you're going to have to get in there and get your ass beat a little bit and then learn, learn the ins and outs uh, in order to really understand this pair specifically. Because it does have its own movements. It respects certain fib levels over others. And then some currency pairs, they'll respect the 61 mostly. This one respects the 88.6. So whatever you want to trade and be good at, you should be practicing with in the beginning. Now, you don't have to blow money. Practice on a demo account and understand the mechanics. And I think that any new trader can trade NASDAQ. Okay, okay. Only because like, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of how different they are, but oftentimes, you know, new traders, they see other traders trading specific uh, pairs or, you know, exotics and they want to dabble in it. But I'm not sure, you know, discipline wise, consistency wise, if it's something they should be doing. So I just want to give the right advice. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's basically the same as currencies. Like you, you got swing traders and currencies and you got scalpers. You got swing traders with indices and you have scalpers. If I was a swing trader, I would just be looking at the daily all day and I'd be looking at the weekly and the daily. And I'll be like, well, like all this shit aside, it's the same thing as Forex. The market is creating higher highs and higher lows. It's respecting key areas of daily structure as support. Right now we're at an area of daily resistance. And so that's why we're seeing a bit of a pullback. But until we break this structure we're still bullish right yep because the market's still creating higher lows and so for me it's the same as forex where if the market does violate these lows then we've shifted the momentum and now we're back bearish and look for pullbacks and trade the other direction correct so i know the direction i know the key levels and i know how to find entries on the smaller time frames and that's the same big picture as you would with currencies but with indices they just move a lot faster so it's for people like me who have a you know, low tolerance for patience. I got patience, but I also want my money quick when it comes. Like if I do catch a trade and it starts pushing up, I'm going to make my 50, 60 to 80 points in a span of 15 or 30 minutes. And so I can wait as long as I need to, to get in the trade. But once I'm in the trade, I want this thing to be moving. And that's, yeah. that's kind of why, what I see the difference between indices and currencies. Did you start out with Nas as your first pair? Or no. did you gra gradually kind of transition over? Yeah, no, I started trading NAS, I think, at the end of 2020. So I did currencies first, too slow for me. I got introduced to US 30, very exciting, blew too many accounts on US 30. So I took a step <laughs> back from indices and I went back to currencies. Currencies, again, too slow for me, went over, to, uh, went over to gold, traded gold for 2019. That was fun. Moved over to SPX, which is like a sweeter version of US 30. Mm -hmm. had some success on SPX, but structure wasn't being respected as well as let's say NASDAQ. So I found that NASDAQ is kind of in between. It's, it's a very, very clean pair that follows structure. doesn't move as fast as US 30, but it can pay way more than, uh, than currencies. So I've been doing that since about 2020. Almost the same strategy. I've just been tweaking it over the years. And NAS is the only thing you trade? The only thing I trade. Yep. Sweet, sweet. I am looking for this GJ swing position, though, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I've been looking for the swing trade because I got all these friends like, you know, you know, we got people in the industry, right? And they'll text me like a trade that they're in and they're in at the bottom of this like beautiful currency swing trade and they're scaling in and all this stuff. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> this thing, it's just running in the background. Like as long as the trend continues, this thing could take months, but it's just it's just going to keep flowing in that direction. And so uh, this is one of those rare moments where I'm looking for my own swing trade here. I actually broke down, broke down D GJ with one of my students a few nights ago. And uh, I, I, I paper traded it cause I don't, I don't trade GJ anymore, but mm -hmm. I paper traded it and I got in like literally at the top of that move and it's still dropping. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have held for that long, but, uh, but I, I do miss GJ from time to time. I do miss it. So it's a <laughs> sweet pair. It's a sweet pair. It's very rare, but like that, this is exactly what it was. It was, there was three touches here. Uh-huh. Right there. Yep. Higher highs, higher lows. And each touch was getting lower. There was a, an obvious weakening of, of the, the momentum here. We're at a previous liquidity zone. We broke through that trend line. This is like what I mean by sometimes I shift over my bias. My <laughs> zones are the same, but I took my entry from 161 point or like 162, dragged it all the way down. Because the more I looked at it, the more I started to realize a lot of people are going to be looking for this double bottom here. 
And whenever a lot of people are looking for something on, uh, you know, in Forex, the market is going to do the fucking, it's going to do the most to kick them out before yeah. you get a real move. So that healthy skepticism in the market, I think, is how to how to trade currencies. Let me ask you, why is it that I see a lot of tr some traders, um, like the way you have your trade idea set up, you're looking for price to come down, I guess, to your buy limit area there and then shoot up. But why not catch the sells on the way down and then turn around and grab the buys also? You can. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It depends on the kind of trader you are. Okay. I look, if, uh, if you look at your MyFX book or any sort of analytics or results, what you'll see is you'll figure out where most of the money is being made. Is it in the direction of the trend? And you might have to do this manually. You kind of look at all the buys in the direction of the trend. And then every time you try to trade against it. And what I found with my own results is when I trade in the direction of the trend, I make a lot more money. One, uh -huh. because the moves come faster, they're bigger, they're whatever. And so I'm in less, like I'm in less of a like stressed out state and I'm allowing them to pay out longer. It's this huge like domino effect that happens just by trading in the direction of the trend. And so I don't trade against the direction, not because like, I don't think I can, or there aren't opportunities like the, the GJ short was right here. I could have shorted it on the way down, mm -hmm. but I know that based on my own results, if I just waited for the buy entry, I'm not risking as much money. It's all straightforward for me. And I can, you know, just get the trade on the upside. So just by looking at the results, that's what works. Gotcha. Gotcha. But I'm speaking from a scalper point of view, you're, you're an intraday. So <laughs> totally different, uh, totally different strategy. For sure. I used to scalp NAS all the time. And so like as a scalper, you know, you can catch things like the retest and closure back under the 13,500 down to this area. For me, I'm just looking at the bigger picture because we're already in a trend. And if I just catch a higher time frame entry, I can literally keep holding this thing. Yeah. Uh, the, folks, the folks that entered down here, the folks that entered down here, they're still holding. Whew. Right? That was not the folks, the institutions, I would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Institutions who bought down here, they're still holding. All they have to do is let the market do all the work. And so that's why, like, if I catch a higher time frame low, then when the market is just doing its thing, it's just doing all the work. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I got my employees out here, these candles just doing, doing the work for me. Got a whole team running. Do you have a specific pip goal or are you just catching a setup, a specific move? Um, I usually have a pip goal because trading as a technical trader and having these sorts of, um, you'll, you'll get big trades every once in a while, but you're not going to make consistent money. So I pull out 60 to 80 points. I move my stops to break even and I hold that runner. So I walk away with that 60 to 80 points, no matter what. Now the runner, let me show you this thing. This is actually, this might blow your mind. This is a runner I'm holding from yesterday. This is, this is a 0 0.02. This is a micro, two micros. Okay. Running on NAS from yesterday. It's at $800. Crazy. <laughs> 800 fucking dollars on a trade that's sitting in break even with a fucking 0 0.02. A 0.2. <laughs> right, a 0.02, two fucking that penny is, lots. That's awesome. So the reason that I leave the runners, a lot of people are like, Roy, why would you leave a micro? Why would you leave a micro? It's like, if you have a few of those running throughout the week, I promise you at the end of the week, when you go close, 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 that's your fuck, that's the fuck you money. Yeah, yeah. The 60, the 60 to 80 points that I pull out, that's money I need for bills. That's money I need to invest in crypto. That's money I need for anything to reinvest in my, in my trading account. But the runners, I kind of just treat as like, but I'm going to go spend this shit. <laughs> this, is, this is for me. This is my money. It adds up. It adds up for sure. Fuck yeah. I'm not out here buying Lamborghinis and whatnot with that money, but that's like, that's vacation money. That's like, that's basically everything. Whenever I'm flying around, whenever I'm doing whatever, because I don't feel comfortable spending all my trading income. Like a lot of people, they're, they're very comfortable spending their trading income. I've seen dry months. I've seen great months. I put all my shit away. People don't let somebody convince you that, you know, you're not doing it right. If you're not spending all your fucking money, your goal should be to put enough money away to take care of yourself for life. Not for three years, not for two years for life. Invest, 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 in, invest in yourself. Be like, Oh, like this is like, I love this shit which is I'm not getting a Lambo, right? I'm not doing the supercar thing. 
but a lot of people are going to are going to start to have this perception that there's no money being made because et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If all the money I'm investing now in the next three to five years in this next bull run is going to come out to probably 10 or 15 Lamborghinis minimum. And so that's the real, that's the real game for a lot of you guys is play the long game, put enough money aside and people can say whatever, right? Oh, he's driving this, he's doing this, whatever, whatever. When you pull out with that crypto portfolio, that looks like, yeah, <laughs> there is nothing that anybody can say. So that's the real key. It's like, do you want to be rich for a little bit? Do you want to look rich or do you want to actually build generational wealth? And so the majority of my trading is reinvested. The majority of my trading profits is reinvested. Not in my trading account. Fuck my trading account, right? I'm getting it out of there and I'm putting it into something that's going to work for me in the back end, like crypto. Real wealth is silence. Yes. Real wealth is silence. Don't, don't, you get dazzled by the, the glitz and the glam not knowing what's going on behind the scenes. For sure. I, I, the IG shit is just toxic. Yeah. Everybody's, 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 everybody's comparing, everybody's doing stuff. People, look at the shit that you post on IG. Did you post like that fucking thing that you just dropped in the kitchen earlier? Did you post you fucking closed the door on that thing and it broke? Did you post how your wires got tangled? You tried to pull them apart and you tore them? You don't, you don't post all the L's. You post the good meal that you just had. Right. Not the cereal breakfast, not the oatmeal. You post the fucking thing. So if you look at the stuff that you're posting, you just look at Instagram as a whole. You realize there's some facades. There's some facades, people. It's a giant highlight reel. That's what it is. Facts. Giant highlight reel. So that's why we focus on ourselves. Right. How am I going to make money today? I can either get bored right now, hop off the charts and go go waste time right because fucking video game people whatever whatever or i could sit here and wait for an opportunity and guess what i can accept the fact that if i wait here for another two hours and there's no opportunity that's fine and so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to focus on myself i'm going to focus on opportunity because it's everywhere and if i do that i'm going to make a bunch of money i hope you guys will too focus on yourselves Focus on those things that you need to do to make money. That's the name of the game. Roy, that first entry that you're looking for, that's a pretty deep pullback. Yeah, it is. But as long as the market's creating higher lows, it's still valid. Because the market will pull back as far as 88.6%. See that mm -hmm. 88.6? Yes. So it could literally retrace this entire move and wick back up. Now, if it wicks up, that's a good sign. If it stalls here and closes with solid candles and fills this wait. whole area, then it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, wait. However, higher time frame. Until we break below the green zone, we're still bullish because we're still creating higher lows here. So no matter how far back the, the pullback is or how aggressive it looks or whatever, like take this, for example. Market was pushing up bullish consolidation double top here okay then there was a shift in momentum price stalled out another shift in momentum everyone started to look for bears everyone started to look for cells down here or cells right here off the retest or even cells right here off the triple top in reality as long as the market's printing higher lows it will keep going up but right now we're in a pretty tricky situation because we're at this weekly high so we're going to get the retracement as long as and let me delete this so we can actually see it as long as price is respecting this new higher low. We're still bullish. We're still bullish. Yeah. Now, can it come down wick below to hit the green zone and close back above? Yeah, I can do that too. Which would be most likely a liquidity grab. Which will be most likely a liquidity grab as long as the bodies close above. If we don't close above, it's sitting below it. It's just, it's going to most likely continue to the downside. But if it comes down to grab this and pulls back up, obvious liquidity grab. We look for the next higher low at the same zone that we were looking at at first. And then that's where we can take the market up. Gotcha. Textbook. Textbook. The only thing that's not textbook is the amount of time we got to wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what I usually do on these streams is by 11 a.m. If we don't already have a move, because 11 a.m. is basically when London session closes. 
So if by 11 a.m. we don't have a move, I'll usually hop off and I'll just update everybody through the Discord channel if there's a trade. Okay. Because like sitting here, the longer you sit in front of the chart, the worse your decision-making apparatus is going to be. Because you're making too many decisions, like staying on the chart. Should I enter? Nah, don't enter yet. Should I enter? Nah, don't enter yet. Those are quality decisions being made. And if decision-making is a muscle that you exhaust, the longer I sit here, the longer I'm, you know, waiting for the next zone, the, you know, the worse is going to, the harder it's going to be for me to make the right decision when it's time. But normally I hop off, but for all intents, I'm staying on today. And we're looking for that pullback. So here's the bottom of my zone. Here's the very top price broke through all the early buy positions that we were looking for at first. So remember that rule guys, no rejection, no entry. So we saw the no rejection, no entry price is pulling back down. There's the 88.6 right here. So here's what I'm actually going to do. Beginning of the trend is here. Retest is here. It's the low of the trend. That's the 88.6. And so adjust that zone, kill this zone. Actually, keep that zone. Kill that zone. All right, so I think price is going to play around here. It's going to break through the 88, wick, 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 and then continue back up. So this is where I'm going to start to scale in is at the 88.6. And then as it starts to fade down a little bit lower, I'm basically just looking to catch the 88 to 61 trade. If it continues, that's what my runner is for, but really the trade is going to look like this. Does this pair only move mostly during New York? Does it move during London or Asian at all? It'll move during, it's about, it'll move probably half as much as it does in New York. So if you have like a New York range that's 200 pips or 200 points, you'll have the London range be like 75 or 100 or 110. The overlap between the sessions is dead, dead. The market, uh, on Charlene, after this call, I'll basically, we can get on a call and I can break this down for you. All right, cool. I'll show you the business model of how, these, how, this, how this pair takes money from traders. <laughs> <laughs> and it's literally playing out right now. It's incredible. If you guys are Triadix members, you know exactly what I'm looking at. That consolidation, fake down, fake up. Retest at a low, continue. So we are getting a massive rejection off the 13,500. This is a zone that I've been talking about for a few months now. Uh, it's natural that we get that push off because higher time frame, a lot of selling pressure has been built up at that zone. As long as we create higher lows, we're going to continue bullish. So I'm still looking for long positions. Let's allow the market to play around this 86 zone. And then if we close back above, I'll be taking a few long positions to scale in. So no entries yet. I don't want to enter too prematurely and then end up getting stuck in some sort of drawdown. So give it a second. The reason why I ask does it move during other sessions is because if if the if the if the market's activity is doing what you want it to do in another session, are you still looking to take that trade? Because you said that oh, yeah. when yeah, you yeah. enter, you want it to just start moving. But if it's in a session where it's you know a dud, are you still looking for those entries? So the only time I'm looking for the market to, to start moving right away is when I'm on the charts, which is basically the first two hours of New York. So an hour before New York starts, the New York open, and an hour after. So guys, I'm actually going to scale in real quick for a long position here at the 88.6. There's going to be a scalp. It's going to be a quick scalp up. I do see price playing around here. So give it some time. If, uh, if we just start to move very, very aggressive and we break through this previous low at 13,366, you can close the trade. Don't put a full position, put a small position here. As price retraces a little bit lower, you can enter more positions that are heavier, but leave the first one a light position in case you go into drawdown, you still have some ammo to enter another. Um, I'm sorry, Charlene, what was your question? 
No, I was asking if price came to like, let's say your entry point and out of session, are you still looking to take that entry? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the markup is there, if it's creating a higher low at a key level, I'll take the trade. I don't expect it to move until my sessions, though. So sometimes I'll take a trade right before I sleep and just set my stop loss and my TP and I'll go to sleep. And I don't expect it to hit until like 4 a.m. or something. Okay. So even, even if I like wake up to go to the bathroom, whatever, I check it. I don't touch it at all. So those kinds of trades, it's really, really set it and forget it. The trades that I'm taking now, like if I do catch this 88 entry and it pushes back up, I'm going to just be looking to close my trade and just move on with my day. Gotcha. So win or lose, no matter what it is, I'd like to have my result uh, sooner rather than later. And then I'm basically just done for the day after that. Same thing I do. Yeah, same thing. Same thing with gold. I wait for price to come, grab my entries. As soon as it hits my 20, 30, 40 pips, I'm out. Good stuff. Yep. Did you, um, Roy, did you jump in Nas already or no? I did. I entered a small position though, because I do expect this thing to play around first and try to kick us out before it pushes back up. And so I entered a small position and I'm going to scale into the rest of my positions as this thing pushes down a little. Um, I'm expecting a short term, like a scalp position all the way back up to about three, 450, 13, 450. And then it's going to be, it's going to be a day on the higher time frames. Let me show you guys one thing. If we close below the, these weekly lows on the daily or these weekly highs, if we close below these today, that's going to be a, that's going to be a red flag for me. All right, it's going to be a red flag that we're actually going to be pushing more to the downside. This retracement that's happening now, every time you hit a higher time frame liquidity zone like this, you're going to get massive pressure. The question is, do we continue to form higher lows or does the market crumble and start to break levels? So we got that first rejection. I am expecting a push back up. Patience is king. And let's let this trade go to the moon real quick. So let me know in the chats if you guys took this trade. So I have an inventory real quick of where we are and how many people got involved. Roy, how do you feel about five-minute entries on indices? Um, obviously, it's how you can get the best. Like, literally, if I know that this purple zone is my entry, the closer we get to that five-minute... Incoming like, man. So we are about, like, 13 points away. So if I'm looking at this on the five-minute and I want to get, like, a... I want to save myself these 15 points, <laughs> get as close as possible, yeah, yeah that's, it's, definitely, it's definitely worth it. But there's nothing that I'm seeing on the five-minute that I can't see on the 30. It's either going to push up from this 88.6 or it's not, right? Yeah. So now it's just a patience game. See if we get the push up right away or if this thing wants to come for one more. Either way, I'm in the trade. Uh, if we pull back a little bit more, I may enter some more positions. And then I'll just try to take it up to this head and shoulders, basically. That's my TP1. As soon as it gets here, move my stops to break even, take partial profits, and let the rest run to the moon. Not, not the moon, 13,500 TP2. <laughs> and, then, and then leave the runner to go to the moon. <laughs> all right, y'all, give me one takeaway. All right, so I'm seeing all the people that took it. Nick's in, Brunelio's in. JGM, Renzo, T said I'm in at 393. All right, good stuff. That's a pretty good entry. On YouTube, let me know if anyone's in here. All right, let me know if you guys, uh, let me know if you guys have learned something during this stream. Let me know if you guys have learned something during this stream. Give me one thing that you guys have taken away from the stream. If you guys are on YouTube, if you guys are on Zoom call, let me know one thing that you guys have taken away from the stream. If you're just on here waiting for a trade and you ain't learning nothing, you're missing a huge opportunity. So don't fuck around. All right. 
Ask great questions, pay attention, and take lessons away. So speaking of lessons taken away, let me know one thing that you guys can take away from this call. If it's not profits, let it at least be some value. I'm in profits, y'all. I'm in profits. That rejection is beautiful. That Charlene is called a wick entry. Taking notes, taking notes. No, 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 chill. This thing could, it could still come back and close on me. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not cocky at all in these markets. I don't care how long you've been trading NAS. I'm, in my mind, one of the best NAS traders around. And I'm telling you, the second you get cocky, that's when the, that's when these markets will fuck around with you. So yeah, they humble you. Yeah, they let you know who's boss real quick. <laughs> rejection is good. Continue to look for higher low closures. Continue to look for rejections. And even if it does, if it closes above the 78 and comes down for one more test like this, we can enter an, another position at 380 and like really load up to, to take this thing up. So now you're expecting to hold this hold this this move until probably what market close or <sighs> no 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 probably until like 1 p.m. So if I'm looking at this in the 30 minute time frame, my question is: Is this current red candle going to be the one to wick up and close up here, or is it going to be the next one? Okay. Is the next candle come up? That's going to be the next 30 minute candle. So I at least have another hour and a half until I get like the real answer. And so that's that's what it is. I just got to wait basically an hour and a half. Okay. Or until the market hits the zone. It could be 15 minutes, could not be. If we break below this low, if we break below it, I might just close out the trade now. I don't necessarily have to wait for stop loss either. But patience is a virtue. 18 minutes into a 30 minute candle, it's not bad. Yep. We still got time. I still think this thing could break through and then wick back above. If we wick back above, I'm going to be entering more positions or if we reject this previous low here. All right, Rory. Thanks a lot, man. I'm going to hop off. I got, got some stuff I got to do, but I'm going to hit you up later. We're going, to, we're going to talk. Maybe you can teach me a little bit more about this, this pair. No doubt. I'll let you know how this trade plays out. Most likely this thing's going to play around here and give us a push up later in the session. So I'll keep you posted on this too. Definitely. Appreciate I've been, you I've stopping been back. by. I've been back testing it, so we'll we'll see. But yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Guys, you guys have a good one. And I uh, will talk soon, Roy. No doubt. Take it All easy. Right. All right. Sheesh. All right, guys, this thing is starting to crash through. Um, while I do, while I do expect a rejection here, I still expect some sort of wick rejection. We're going to have to sit in a little bit of drawdown here in order to get that answer. So I'm going to stay on. I'm going to let you guys know how these trades play out. Um, that 13,500 is getting respected like crazy. All right. Quick rejection. We could go as low as this previous area of structure, if you guys can see resistance, resistance support. So we could go as low as 13,300 before we continue. But what I'm looking for is just a push up before any of that happens. Yeah, I just entered another position. There's one more. So now I have a total risk of 0.75% of my account. 
So that's the total split between two trades. I have my larger position down here at the bottom. And let's just see if we get a wick up. After an aggressive candle like this, just know that continuing to enter buy positions is risky. Um, and so if you're stuck in that one trade, I would just wait for it to rebound and pull back up. I'm entering more positions down here because I entered a small one at the first entry. And this second entry um, would give me a better position. So I'm entering you know, a few more. So those are the trades I'm taking. Let's see if we get a rejection. If we don't get a rejection, the market pulls back down. It's okay. There's no problems. That's what risk management is for. Yeah, the market could come all the way down to 300. Now this 315 area. Damn. Well, we'll try for this entry to see if we get a pullback at least. If not this entry, we'll wait for it to pull back down to the 300s. And at the 300s, that's where we'll get a continuation. So long story short, break and retest. Let me adjust this a little bit. 78 is down here. 61 is right here. We basically just bought off the 50. We're looking for a break back above the 50. The 78 entry would be the next one. All right, so for now, we're in that trade. Let's see if we at least get a pull back up before we keep dropping. And uh, yeah. All right, so let me show you guys something really cool. The entry I entered at the bottom is in profit but the entry from the top is in drawdown and they're kind of canceling each other out where the bottom entry, because it's bigger, has more profit than the one that's in drawdown. So what I can do is if I closed both of those trades now, I can still walk away in profit and mitigate my risk on the trade. Then what I can do is I can wait for a wick back up and then enter the trade again. So if you guys are in that position where you entered at the top and you entered at the bottom, you should be in profits now, like total profits on both of those trades. That is a good way to hedge yourself out of a trade that you entered prematurely and it's shooting down below the zone. Now, if you accepted the risk, you're like, well, I'm risking 500 in this trade regardless. Whether hit stop loss doesn't matter. I'm risking that money regardless. Then hold the trade. But if you're, you know, if you got in that buy and as soon as it went to drawdown, you start to second guess yourself by scaling in that second entry, you've now given yourself a chance to hedge yourself out of a loss. So there's no loss taken, even though you went into drawdown. That's the beauty of, scaling and using some of these strategies to be able to limit your losses on the charts. So you guys can see here, the loss is floating basically 80 bucks and the win is floating about a hundred or $220, right? Actually, what I could do is, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna close that first position. I'm gonna close half of my second position. And now I'm just sitting in this bottom entry. So I'll send this out in the chart, Alex chat here. So I did take a minor loss, but now I'm sitting. So I took a minor loss and then I close out half of my trade. So that cancels itself out because I was up 220 on one of them. I was down 90 bucks on another one. So I closed the $90, boom, $90 lost. I think it was 106, lost yeah. hundred bucks. The one that's floating right now is floating 190. Yeah, that's why I, I always wanted to get you to understand, bro. Don't be putting yourself in that mode. What are you talking about? Yeah. No, that's Brandon, true. Brandon, you talking to me or you're on the phone, bro? Oh, sorry, brother. <laughs> he said, don't put yourself in that mode. I was like, what mode, bro? What are you talking about? Yeah, no, my girl missed her flight and she got all this uh, breast milk for the baby and she didn't want to oh, like, throw it all away. Damn. Yeah, but she was snapping. So I just wanted her, you know, we, we got positive vibes over here. No matter how bad things get, it can get a lot more worse. Sure, bro. I love that. I love yeah. that. Love that. Love that. 
I really thought you were talking to me. I was like, shit, bro. I know what I did. But yeah, let me walk you guys through these. So these are some trades. Uh, half of these trades are from earlier. So don't, you know, half of these trades are from earlier. These two bottom ones is what I want to point your attention to. I closed 123 on the win and I lost 104 on that early entry. So 104 killed it. Boom. 10 points drawdown, whatever it is. The other trade I cut half. And so that made up for the loss. And so now I'm at zero. The trade I currently have running is down at this wick entry. If this thing runs up, I'm fucking rich. Even if I close half the trade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for price to retest again. Because prices like to retest entries a few times. Then once it pushes up, I'll move my stop loss to break even. And I'm in profits. Much like a lot of you should be now, regardless of what strategy you used. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move my stop loss to break even. 380. This is now a risk-free trade. We're up about 30 points. And then we just see, we wait to see if we got to push all the way up to 428. Boom. All right. On that second trade, I'm still floating about 600 bucks. And that is about 32 points, 300 pips. Damn, it was a good ass day, bro. I need to keep, this is what I need to keep up. What, just in trading? I don't know if Brandon's talking to me this time. Yeah, that was something I'm saying. It's such a good day <laughs> trading. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, there was a lot of shorts to the downside. And so, like, there was a, a bunch of opportunity missed on the downside, but all we need is a few candles. And so waiting long enough, it'll give you a huge opportunity. Granted, obviously, this was a much faster move. And then this move down was a lot faster. So it could have just been, you know, <laughs> but waiting in the direction of the trend, is, it is what it is. He said, yeah, bro, I passed my phase one. I got cocky and now I'm in drawdown. It happens, bro. Just get back in the game, like focusing on all the shit you did wrong is never going to solve anything in life ever, 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 ever. Right. You fucked up. Like let's just, let's just say you did something really fucking bad. You fucked up. The longer you sit there and I fucked up mode versus what am I going to do about it? Mode it's going to be a spiral. So you know what to do. Get your mindset right back and you know what it is. I scalped it and closed at four Oh six. Beautiful. I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just close half my profits again. Because I'm floating five hundred and fifty dollars, so I'm gonna close two seventy five of that, which is basically just a thirty, uh, thirty point move. So even let's let's say that you guys are using micros, because I don't want to use my account size in case you guys are using different lot sizing. But if you had a point oh two on this trade, point oh two, you just close. You're floating sixty dollars right now. So you just close thirty dollars. You get to walk away with thirty. And then this other 0.01 is running for you. Now, if it keeps going all the way, you have another, let's call it 30 or 40 bucks to make. So you'll end up with $110 total. Major key. So if you entered at 370, beautiful. The 88.6. Gorgeous. Performing support at the 78. Let's see if we hold. The market could very well continue to come down, y'all. Just keep... You know, be mindful that when the market retraces this heavy, we could get a pretty good, you know, a pretty good pullback back into the green zone. So I am in break even for that reason. Um, the market can, you know, come down and wick as long as we close above the 78. Honestly, we could have a really good fucking trade to the upside. If the market starts crashing, we're in break even. So it's a zero risk trade. So let's hold this thing. 
We're making money. And that is what matters. All right, did you guys like that trick about scaling in? Did anybody here lose money on the scale in? Did anybody not understand how to scale in, put a bigger position on top? What really, just let me know what the result was of either anybody who scaled in or the folks that decided to just enter the full position. Or did anybody just wait and enter the full position at the bottom? I think, I think it was elite, the way you explained it, how you enter the small position at the top, and then, you know, you double down at the bottom, and then you canceled out the one at the top, just in case. And I never heard nothing like that before. That's like a Phil Jackson play. <laughs> yeah. I like, like that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, instead of Phil, because it's like, I don't want to be too complicated. I'm trying to keep shit simple. And some of these entry execution hedging strategies get really complicated. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just really glad that you guys understood it because I feel like it could help a lot of people. If this thing had gone sour, for example, and we had lost the trade, I would have lost zero fucking money. Zero fucking money. That's insane. Imagine being wrong on a trade and not losing money. What? And so that's the beauty of it is I'm hedging my downside risk. And then I've closed my, like that bottom position, right? I closed half when we first got to the break even. And then I closed another half. When I was up in profit, I closed $275. But guess what? I'm floating already another $400, even though I've closed the trade a few times. Now, if this thing continues to run the TP, it'll be over a thousand bucks. I'll close that trade completely. I'll leave a micro runner. I'll leave a 0.02. And you guys can see that the micro that I left yesterday is almost at $700 off a of 0.02. This dirty ass screen. Hold up. So runners can really pay for you if you allow them to. All right, chart addicts. If you guys need a good broker to use, message me after this. We'll talk about that later. Um, just make sure that whatever broker you're using, you trust them. You know exactly who you're working with and the credibility of that brokerage. But good spreads. Good fees, low fees. Those are the priorities in trading. All right, everybody. I've been on here. I think I'm just rambling at this point. We've been on here for since 8.30. This is three and a half, probably our longest live stream. And we just caught basically 50 points. And it took us fucking 10 hours. All right. I hope you guys know that my ADHD ass is not built to be waiting anywhere for three, four hours. But that's the skill set I've been able to develop over the years, not allow the pressure to get the best of me and to stay focused and disciplined on the entries and execution that I have right in front of me. And that's what everybody needs to constantly remind themselves as a trader is I had a system. I wasn't going to enter here, even though there was FOMO people in the YouTube, like we missed it. It's flying. It's flow. Well, you should have entered it. You missed the trade. We get a pullback. The market did not respect the, uh, did not respect the 78 zone that I had. It kept breaking through. I revised right? I was adaptable. The market came down to my first zone. I took a chance on it, but I said exactly what I was going to do. I was going to enter a small position here. And then as the market retraced against my entry, I'll enter more. That's exactly what I did. The market came back down to that bottom zone. I entered another position. It came up, I hedged myself out of my loss, cut the losing trade, left that bottom position winning. And now I'm just literally floating and break even. I've already took partial profits. So I've already made money for the day. And this thing is now either going to run into the sunset or it's going to fucking reverse to my entry. Either way, I don't care because I've made money and I'm risk-free. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is fucking trading. Everybody can be a successful trader, but you got to put in the work. They say, well, Roy, we don't want to join Chart Addicts because, you know, everybody else is just giving me the trades and you guys are trying to teach me how to trade and you guys are doing personal coaching and there's some, yes, you have to go through some hard work to become successful. Yes, you have to build a trading plan. Yes, 
You have to have accountability with a coach so they can make sure you're following the plan. But, but if you do that stuff, you can become a successful trader. So it's the trade-off. It's like, yes, there's always work that's got to get done. I understand there's courses and stuff and whatever shit. I get it. But if you do the shit, you can make money. And so do the shit. To me, I think it's very straightforward, y'all. This is just, uh, it's a massive game where people can't focus long enough in order to make progress in this game. Just always trying to cut corners and trying to, you know, cheat code, all this stuff. It's going to be tough. He said, run to the sunset. I hope people don't actually follow this, this fool. What happens if it free falls? Can you head yourself out then? I'm in break even. Dude, this, this, these are people that just don't fucking listen. This dude's got one hand on his dick and one hand in one ear just trying to just, oh, do what I do. Bro, fucking pay attention. Don't be a, don't be a fucking moron in the, in the fucking comments. How do you manage taxes? I'm not a licensed tax professional, so please reach out to a licensed tax professional. All I know is I pay very little taxes on my trading legally. So you guys got to go talk to your CPA and be like, what was Roy talking about? He, don't, he barely pays taxes. What was all that about? Your CPA might say things like, oh, he probably has a trust. Oh, he probably has an insurance. Policy. Oh, he probably registered as an LLC, as a trader. And so all of his taxes pay corporate tax rather than um, income tax. How can I develop a mindset like yours? It's practice. You got to just be in trades and practice. This trade, if it runs against me and comes down to my break even, there's two, there's two options that you can, there's two ways that you can react. You'll either, you're either going to be very upset and just feel some kind of way and feel like the market has betrayed you and start to get into this emotional state, or you can suck it the fuck up and look for the next opportunity. That's how you develop a mindset like me. He says, on behalf of the Davids, we don't claim you. Bro, your own Davids are kicking you out of the, out of the fucking community. Damn, Naz runs so beautiful. Got to be back testing. I usually do this type of scale in. Bro, Roy, you should call this trade on the Enigma app too. It's not a high probability trade. People got to realize that what I do here on the chart addict side and the shit that happens on Enigma have fucking nothing to do with each other. What I do on my personal account and the stuff that I try to provide value-wise have nothing to fucking do with each other. This trade does not meet the criteria of an Enigma trade. My Enigma trade, the reason that we have a high profitability on that, on that app, the, the NAS trades, we're, we're, we're getting there. I'm trying, I've been trying to fucking cut corners here. But the strategy has a high win rate. And I only want to take trades that meet all the confirmations. And so if you guys, you know, want scalp positions, join Chart Addicts and live trade with me, get in and out and do your thing and fucking, you know, do your thing. But the Enigma app, I'm really looking for things that will confirm. So when the market retraces and it comes all the way back down here and then starts to make higher lows, this is a trade that I might call on the Enigma app to really push the market high because it's like a swing type trade. We can catch hundreds of points and it's a beautiful trade. All right. So be mindful, guys, that there are different types of trades. There are different types of opportunities and there's different types of, um, you know, trading styles. The Enigma app, high probability, more intraday to swing trades. This, what we do at Chart Addicts, I'm just trying to teach you guys how to look at structure. And I want you guys to follow along while I'm trading. It's just that simple. If you guys are on YouTube, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys pulling up. Even if you didn't make money today, make sure that you guys are you know, learning something from these streams. So if you guys could please hit the like and subscribe, it means a lot. Make sure that you guys just hit the like and subscribe. I'll wait for you guys to do it. It would uh, mean a lot to the channel and we can continue to push this channel and get more people involved. Even if you guys hated this, push it out to more people. Get people to come in here and talk shit like this dude, David Johnson. Oh, your last name isn't even spelled right. The Johnson with an E? What, what fucking sense does that make? How can I go about getting an LLC if I'm, Jama if I'm Jamaican? You'd have to go to the regulatory authority in your country and ask yourself basically what are... Uh, what are the, uh, what is the regulatory authority that you can register with for your, for Jamaica? So it'll probably be some office somewhere. You'll have to go register. Maybe it's online. Maybe it's not. I said, David P said, I got you fam. I got, you know, I appreciate you. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's trying to predict the market and clearly acts like he knows what he's doing. But 
He said, you're driving a Toyota and trying to tell people don't buy a Lambo. You're just mad because you can't afford one. Bro, how much time do you think this person has to get on this YouTube and talk this much shit? He says, oh, you're acting like you know what's going on. I know exactly what's going on. I can bet you you have a two-inch penis. I can bet that you've never made money trading. I can bet that anybody who has enough time to type out that long-ass fucking message is a pussy. And you're on my stream regardless. And so regardless of what you say, you're still feeding the algo. You're still continuing to add, you know, to, to add fuel to the fire. And you're not making any money. Like, how can I be mad when I'm literally sitting here making your monthly salary? And you're in the comments sucking dick. I just don't understand that. Look, like, well, I make more money than you, dude. All right, guy in a YouTube comment. Sure, let's believe that you make more money than me. That's not fucking true. Said I drive a Toyota. I do drive a Toyota. I drive a Toyota Camry XE or an SE. And it's a brilliant fucking car. It's an incredible vehicle. And I'll be driving it for the next five years. But I could also buy your life five times over. So... Guys, when I come out here and do these live streams, I really, really, um, I'm really trying to do this out of some sort of, like, I'm really trying to provide value for the community. Hopefully you guys can learn a thing or two from having patience and seeing all the different things that we're going through here. Don't think that I'm getting paid from YouTube for this. We ain't got to be here. And you don't have to be here either. So you're yeah, either here and learning day, and making money. That's it. Don't give those haters time of day. Don't even don't even acknowledge them. We're on this feed. We're on this Zoom. We got this recorded. We're all good. We're all happy over here. We're eating. I mean, I'm eating regardless, bro. I'm eating regardless. I'm, I just like to talk my shit. Give me a second here. I'm almost done. Like, regardless of what I'm saying or what I'm doing, I'm still in profits. I, I don't give a fuck. My job is done. But I am going to roast all these fucking pussy boys in the comments because with all due respect, y'all, I'm not going to get on here every week and have a bunch of fucking pussies in the comments talking shit because you're going to get called out. Whoever that dude's name is, he's about to throw another comment in here and just get fucking roasted. And that's the way it's got to be. Now, if, you're, if you have a genuine criticism, if you say, Roy, your entry was early, you should have entered at the 88 sig, you should have entered at this. God, I, I am all open to honest criticism. If you're going to be on here and be a fucking pussy in the comments, then you're going to take this heat. It's just what it is. Or even better, fucking set up a fight with me for charity. And let's just fucking live stream it and uh, come and say that shit to my face. I think that will be a lot better. Do you, do, you watch the, do you watch live stream record? I don't even know what the fuck that means. Yo, I'm down for a charity boxing match. Let me know, bro. I wouldn't do that to you, fam. I ain't offering to fight people, uh, to, you know, I, I ain't offering to fight people because because <laughs> I'm out here because I'm out here concerned about losing, yo. I'm just going to be completely real. If you're stepping in the ring with me, you got to sign this waiver. You did better stir up Roy like last week with that take comment. No, that take comment got me. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You're trying to drag me back in that place. I'm not going to do it. Don't fucking compare me to these people, yo. Said best, uh, best to wait for the markets, and you demonstrated that perfectly. Yes, good stuff. Yeah, all I mean, in, in all honesty, y'all, I could really just right click and just re remove the guy from the chats. But I like talking shit. You guys see me be this like nice, professional person all the time, and I always have to remind myself: this is my fucking stream. This is my fucking stream, and so I'm gonna talk my shit. I'm gonna do whatever I want to do, and uh, that's the beauty of it. And as long as we're making money. That's all that matters. I want to see Roy and Daniel collab. I keep wishing, my boy. He said, bro said I wouldn't do that to you. I mean, guys, we're going we're gonna to do a celebrity boxing. Uh, we're going to do a charity boxing match for the, um, for the FX Summit 23 with some of the celebs. So if you guys want to see what I'm talking about, put your bets in during that celebrity boxing competition. It's going to be for fun. It's going to be all for charity. It's all going to be for the kids. So it'll be really fun for us to just get out there, have some fun and do something a little bit different than uh, do a little bit different. We're also going to have a, a charity basketball tournament. So it's going to be like FIP crew versus chart addicts crew versus versus versus. I think it'll be really dope.
I already have two people that said they wanted to fight. It was fucking, I don't know if you guys know who Mitchell Stocks is. He does a bunch of stock stuff with uh, Raul. He's one of the traders over in Raul's team. And then I also had somebody else. I forgot. Who was it? It was somebody big. Somebody, it was somebody like way bigger than me. It made me rethink the entire fucking tournament. I was like, shit. I'll let you guys know who that is. He says, you guys can't even trade waiting for a signal call. So this guy's talking shit, but he's waiting for us to send him a signal. Like, do you guys see the, the mental illness? Do you guys see the mental illness? It's like they have, they have class, they have fucking degrees to study people like this. You got to go to a whole school and go to a three-year degree and go into fucking drawdown and go into fucking debt and all this stuff just to learn about people like this. So I think that price is pretty close to my break even. Let me see if the break even got hit. Beautiful deal is I'm in break even. I'm in a zero risk trade. All right, price is literally one pip away from my break even. It's getting close. We'll see if it hits. It didn't hit. <laughs> Reject it. Oh my God. No, no, no. You guys got to see this shit. Talking about I can't trade. Buddy, look at this shit. Look how close this shit got to my fucking break even. All right. Fucking, I'll send it in the group chats. You guys can go see this thing hits on fucking close. Holy shit. Will it bounce back? I think so. I think we'll continue to get that push up. God, I can't believe it missed my stop loss. This is insane. Shout out your entries in the in the chats. And yes, I do can I do think the market's going to continue pushing up. Uh, even though, yeah, we did start to create some rejections here. I still think the market's going to push. But let me know you guys' entries in the chats. Did anybody get hit and break even or are you guys still in? The verso said fight Sean Lee. I would fight Sean Lee for I would fight, I would fight Sean Lee for charity, but I'd fight Sean Lee for free. I would fight Sean Lee for free. I would easily fight Sean Lee for free. Disrespectful. Childish. It is what it is. How long have we been on the stream? It's almost, it's almost noon, y'all. All right, it's time to go. It's time to call this thing a day. This is getting ridiculous. If the one hour stays above that higher low you're looking for, there's still a push up. Yeah, I know. I'm still, I'm still expecting that push up. We just need this candlestick to close back above support. That'd be the only thing. So 30 minute candle, got about another 10 minutes left. Keep an eye on that 30 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been great to see you guys for another Thursday live stream. We're on here every single Thursday. On Mondays, I don't do any trading. 1 p.m., I talk about news. So it's right after the New York market open. I talk about news, fundamentals, how they're going to impact the week, and I talk about crypto. So every Monday, I'll see you guys on the streams. Every Thursday, I'll see you guys on the streams. Keep an eye out for the free crypto course that we just put up on YouTube. We have another you know, uh, incredible four or five podcasts that we're dropping every Sunday. So we'll catch you guys around. And... Uh, if my break even gets hit on this one, I'm just going to call it a day. All right. God, it's like kissing that entry. If it gets hit, it gets hit. All right, everybody. I'm going to catch you later. Take it easy. Peace.